<clears throat> let's get into the heroes. So we'll start with Abaddon. Mana cost is decreased from mm -hmm, 100 to 130, 85 to 130, stronger on laning stage. Scepter radius is nerfed, probably a good idea. And he has a movement slow, tell, level 10 talent. Ooh, interesting. Hmm. Giving an Agonims to an ally now grants Alchemist bonus damage and spell amp, even if he doesn't have one yet. Oh, nice. Wow, that's such a big buff for Alchemist. But Alchemist is so strong in the current patch, what the hell? Uh, level 10 talent attack speed is replaced with Acid Spray Armor Reduction. Okay, plus one. That seems so much worse. Wow, that seems so, so much worse. Mm, overall, I mean, I guess plus three. Uh, oh, oh, okay, okay. Replaced uh, health talent with acid spray also grants armor to allies. And the 20 damage talent is replaced with plus one damage per Grievel Greed stack. Max 24 damage. <laughs> That's stupid. 25% mm, cleave is replaced with 0.1 Second chemical rage based attack time. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah, you definitely take that. That that's a nice one actually. I mean unless you need the stun damage. <laughs> hmm. Um Ancient Apparition. Shard now also slows attack for the same amount as movement slow. Radius is increased, duration is decreased. Wow. Hey, shard looks so good now actually so good chilling touch slow duration is uh, increased from 0 0.5 to one second wow that's long duration and spell amp is changed to cold feet damage per second okay okay wow big buffs to aa big buffs to aa pretty huge buffs to aa actually i take a second to to reflect on that that's like going from 0 0.5 to one second slow on the chilling touch Core AA? Yeah, I don't know. The DPS is interesting. The DPS is interesting. I think the spell amp is better then. But the shard is so buffed as well. I don't, th I don't know. I think... AA is going to be like one of the best supports, probably. I know this is just like the third hero that we're reading here, but I think it's going to be one of the best supports in the new patch because this is this is a big buff, dude. Um, his his shard is massively buffed and chilling touch is massively buffed. Mm. Antimage, uh, scepter, blink, fragment, mana cost is decreased. Sure. Blink, mana cost is decreased. Range is rescaled to be better on highest level, worse on lowest level. And the cooldown is lower on highest level, same on high or lower uh, lower cooldown on lowest level and same on highest level. Sure, counterspell mana cost is decreased, and the mana void stun duration is replaced with the plus mana void radius. Okay. Hmm. Well, I think two people might be a little bit sad about the mana void stun duration being removed because it was kind of core for support AM, but this can lead to some really fucking big slams. Um, honestly, pretty small buffs to a hero, like, like, AM's buffs here are way smaller than AA's buffs. Um, and AM is fucking garbage, this patch. Holy shit. Or before this. Slow is decreased on the flux. Slow is not always applied. Damage is still, uh, is only applied when no- Oh, wow, so you almost- You always slow, but it's not as strong. This is a buff. This is an Arc Warden buff overall. Right there. Hmm. Yeah, that's a pretty big buff. I would say. And uh, what else do we have? Strength gain decreased from uh, 3.4 to 2.8. Agi gain is decreased as well. Bur cast point improved from 0 0.4 to 0 0.3. That's a huge buff. Much harder to react to, much harder. Because when you get blink called by axe, 
0 0.4, 400 milliseconds, you can easily react to that. You know, like average person should easily be able to react and do something to uh, 0 0.4. 0 0.3, you should still be able to react to it, but you do not have a very forgiving time span there. Um, as a lot of people's reaction time is gonna be about, you know, 200 milliseconds. Um, that's pretty normal. Some people have like inhuman reflexes. They will have like 150 millisecond reaction time. Uh, and some have slow, like 250. So for them, it's gonna be really hard uh, to catch a 0 0.3 instead of 0 0.4. Yeah, I mean, if you have a hundred ping, if you have a hundred ping, then you, then you add that to your reaction time. That's true. If you have high ping, then, then that's added to your reaction time. So yeah, if you have a hundred ping, then it's going to be very, very, very difficult to react to uh, blink X. No. Um, what else do we have? The slow is increased on his battle hunger, a little bit on level one, his shard max stacks is increased and also less damage reduction per stack. Okay. Uh, cast range is increased on the calling blade, kind of nice. Berserk's call armor instead of mana region and movement speed replaced with 10 movement speed per active battle hunger. Hmm, 10% movement speed per active battle hunger instead of 20. That's a good talent. You can become really fast, especially if you go travels early. Mm, core axe might need some experimenting again, but these nerfs though? Like, he is a lot weaker than before. 0 0.6 nerf to his strength gain is pretty big. Hmm. Interesting. Bane, he has uh, his magic resistance replaced with 20% uh, enfeeble cast range reduction. Wow. You're going to have really bad range when you get hit by that. And five armors replaced with Nightmare Heals Bane, uh, Bane info. This includes attack damage dealt by Bane onto Nightmared enemies info. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Okay. Includes attack damage dealt by Bane onto... That's pretty good. That level 10 talent is pretty good. Both level 10 talents are pretty good, no? Interesting. So instead of having two tanky talents, he now has two different talents. That actually play on his abilities. I like that. I like that. That's much more fun. Now additionally deals 6... 24 damage when applied also increases the damage uh, with the damage per stack duration is decreased from seven to six radius is decreased to be the same as level one damage per stack is decreased from seven to mm -hmm. shard now applies to kidney pump every second attack this is just straight up a buff refreshing this ability refreshes its duration instead of creating a second path Okay. I mean, are you kidding me? Like, hmm. I mean, yeah, m maybe it's not a huge buff because you're still minus four on the maximum, but getting damage every time you just stick an ape on people, you can't blink. If you just put stick an ape on you, your blink goes on cooldown. The, the smaller AoE is going to feel nice to lane against, though. I mean, nicer than before. But, and, and yeah, his burst DPS, I'm sure he can still kill a 4,500 HP target without any real DPS item, just Witchblade. Um, yeah, that's crazy. Beastmaster has a whole page written about him. Cast point is improved on the Wild Axis. The slow is decreased from the boar. Okay, not too important. Call of the Wild Shard now allows to put this ability on auto cast. Doing so will make all the Hawks uh, instantly and automatically cast Dive Bomb on the first viable target in range, regardless of whether the Hawk is still flying or stationary. Shard cooldown uh, reduction uh, increased from 7 seconds to 10 seconds. Dive Bomb now roots for 2.5 seconds instead of stunning for 2. And Dive Bomb cast range is decreased. Okay. I mean, interesting. Um, bonus attack speed is decreased from 15 to 45 to 10 to 40. And Drums of Slom 
Reworked Deceptor grants a new ability to Drums of Slum. Beastmaster starts hitting his drums with ever-increasing attack speed. Each strike deals 110 damage to enemies in a 600 radius, healing him and units under his control for 25% of damage dealt to heroes and 5% of damage dealt to creeps. Drums, drum hits, uh, drum hits deal no damage and don't heal Beastmaster if uh, and don't heal if Beastmaster is stunned or silenced. Duration 6 seconds, cooldown 50 seconds. Mana cost. It's cheap. Okay, we, we need to go into Dota. Like, we, we need to... I, I need to see this starting up Dota. To the lab. Yeah. Drums of Slum. Hello, coordinator? Hello? Please. Feed the beast Is it already updated? It's already updated. I can just try it in demo then. I don't need to wait for a coordinator. A short migration. Alright, let's see it. Prepare for battle. What? Wait, wait. What was that damage? Uh. Alright. Let's just have an enemy here. What? What? This is a 50 second cooldown ability. Are you kidding me? And it heals? Alright, that's um under attack. I die untamed. Your life cycle ends. Yeah, that seems that seems great. That that seems great, dude. How do you play any form of summons or AoE or whatever? Like imagine your TB and you get jumped by that. Let me let me just let me just try something here. What if you have TB? What if we level him? Say we're like mid 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 late game, you know, or not mid late game, like more more mid game, right? And this is just a blink Aghanim's Beastmaster. We're gonna give him a few levels too. And then say he has I don't know some some standard items. Probably not Dragonlance anymore because it's changed now. <clears throat> but let's say we have something like this and oh, this, this guy has this. We pop this, we do this, we do this, right? Fight or flight. I haven't done anything to the illusions, they just died. Nothing. And I didn't use a single axe. Okay, I didn't even skill my, my stuff, dude, before going in there. Let, let me just see here. Uh, if we... If we... Pop this... Ah, yeah, that seems cool. Cool damage. Cool damage, dude. Hmm. If you stun or silence, it does nothing. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I read that too, but, um, hmm. Still can react. On the track. How can a TB react, though? I mean, Meet I guess it could have thunder in that specific scenario, but that was this also with us having literally only Aghanims and the Wild Axes. That's insane. That's insane. Um, yeah, okay, back to this. That's um that's a very strong Aghanims. That's a very strong Aghanims. And you can buff it too. And then you can have like yeah, you, you can do a lot with this dude. That that's so fucking powerful. Um That's so fucking powerful, not gonna lie. Fix my Dota. Dota looks fine, right?
Door looks fine, right? Um, all right. Bloodseeker. Um, Bloodseeker enemy health as max. Well, enemy max health as damage. Lifesteal decreased from 2% to 1.8%. Okay. The shard is slightly nerfed. The max movement speed the bonus is rescaled. So stronger level one, weaker max level. Blood Mist, what are they doing? Movement speed slow is increased from 25 to 30%. No longer damages Bloodseeker through spell immunity. Ooh. Ooh, okay. You might finally have made it sort of interesting to go for. But then magic immunity is nerfed, so there's that too. Um, okay. Okay. I mean, still, still, it's still it's agonims. I don't know. The uh, blood rage attack speed is nerfed. The max movement speed is increased. Sure, nothing too exciting. Minion stun is increased by a hundred milliseconds. Rework the shard. Shadow walk. Um, Shadow walk has two charges and can be cast on allied heroes. Does not break bounty hunters' invisibility when cast on allies. Fade time for allies is always one second. Charge time. No. No, I disagree. No, that, that should not be a thing. What? Old Treant skill? Not exactly. I mean, y yes, sort of, but no, not really. Shadow Walk is a much better ability than that. He's legit giving Shadow Walk to an ally. I don't think you understand. Shadow Walk is much, much better than Old Tree and Invis. Shadow Walk is a very, very strong skill. Okay. So you don't get damage resistance anymore. And you don't have the stun. But you can give Invis to allies. And you have two charges on it. Mm, okay. Uh, no, it does not have backstab damage. It has a backstab slow. When you hit with Shadow Walk, it slows people. <clears throat> hmm, interesting. The new talent soon does it with it too. Oh, what did they do? Shuriken toss damage is replaced with two second silence on hit with oh, two second silence. Yeah, so you don't get the stun, but you can get two second silence from the talent. Hmm. And that that does work for the allies using it. Because I guess you are the one giving them it, so... Huh. Test it. I mean, I'll test it later. But yeah, you can you can chain silence with that for a bit then. Because you have very low cooldown on this. You can just all run at someone and silence them. Uh, okay, let's keep going. Someone can test that if you want to. I'm not going to test it right now. Because if we're going to go to the lab on every single little detail, we're going to be stuck here for a while. Primal Companion reworked to Scepter grants a new ability. Primal Companion creates a Primal uh, Split Brewling based on Primal uh, Brewmaster's Drunken um, Brawler stance. If the Brewling moves further than 1600 units away from Brewmaster, it's silenced and slowed by 50%. If the Brewling takes damage from uh, heroes or hero create controlled units a new one can't be summoned for three seconds if created brewling is killed the ability goes on cooldown for 70 seconds only one brewling can exist at a time all brewling abilities have doubled cooldown when summoned with primal companion if brewmaster if brewmaster uses primal split the existing brewling disappears cooldown 20 seconds mana cost 50 seconds so his agonims is just that he always has a spirit with him Basically, yeah, he has one spirit that he can have with him like all the time pretty much and you can kill it It has to be close to him for it to be effective But you can basically just have the earth panda with you all the time and stun people or even the the storm panda and slow Like catch people and cyclone them run up on them slow them and they can't TP out because you just cyclone them again um, You could also send a slow fire panda to farm somewhere like far away from you. Uh, it's gonna be slow in silence, but that doesn't really matter if you're just sending it down to farm a creep wave or whatever. Interesting. It has a lot of inter interesting uses. Primal Split, uh, Brulings don't refresh their abilities if resummoned. 
Okay, fair enough. And the health talent is changed to with plus one brewed up multiplier for drunken brawler. What? Even more? Oh god, dude, what? Pl no, dude, no, that's not a talent. That's not a talent. What? Yeah, that, that's huge, man. That's really strong. Play play him now. Yeah, I guess so. Pick him now. Uh, Scepter Regal is changed from 800. Current current cast range of Viscous Nasal Goo. Ah, okay. So you can actually have like Octarine maybe work on it. Attack range. Uh, attack damage bonus from uh, stacks is lowered slightly. Um, you can get more range on it. Okay. Yeah, so you can actually go for the cast rate. What? The scepter is going to be broken, no? Well, tell me the scepter is not going to be broken if you... Okay, this this I will go to the lab because this sounds, sounds stupid. Don't you just go like... Octarine and uh, the talent and you just have like incredible range on that? <clears throat> Get outside. Like right now we hit at this range, right? Th this is our current range. But then if we level to max and we take take the goo talents, now we can hit all the way over here. And what if I hit this? Does this also work? Does not work. Okay, cool. Well, fair enough. I mean. Interesting, but okay. Does not work. Well, what have we Fair enough. Not gonna say anything about that. Uh, okay, 200 health is replaced with 80% uh, uh, Bristol back side and back damage. You know, 8 and 4%. And the Warpath Talent is nerfed. So big nerf to Bristol back's damage at the very late game. And he does have, you know, potential to have more cast range, but then he loses his attack speed. Okay. Okay, okay. Ah, uh, interesting. Base movement speed is increased from 282 to 85. Rework the shard, increased duration by two seconds. While insatiable hunger is active, its bonus damage is increased by 12 every one second. Oh, no. <laughs> That's a scary shard. That can actually right click stuff. Um. Spin web now additionally improves turn rate by 0 0.2. Bonus movement speed uh, is decreased from 18 to 54 to 18 to 48 percent. Miss chance is increased from 40 to 55 percent on max on Silk and Bola. You have a spiraling health talent on levels 15. Instead of 400 health, you have 25 Agi. Seems worse, probably a lot of time. I don't know, but with this shard, the Agi is big. Uh, Silk and Bola slow is replaced with AOE Silk and Bola, so the old shard basically. Um, and you just have 15% slow, that's just built in now. So this talent, you're just getting it for free pretty much. And the health talent is replaced with Silk and Bola slow and mischance, 35% more. Whoo, 90% mischance. 90% mischance if you get Silk and Bola. Okay. And uh, the 50 uh, insatiable hunger damage to lifesteal time is replaced with minus 0 0.3 base attack time during insatiable hunger. Oh boy. 80% sir? No, that's 90 man. That's 90. You take you take the 5-5 five, five, and then you plus 5 and then you plus 3 and you, you find yourself at 90. Okay, DPS Brood can really hurt now. Brood got pretty big buff. Yeah, Fnatic have to feel bad. They just played Brood and lost today in a tournament. And then it gets buffed right after. Just have a Coddle follow Brood around jungle. You can have 1000 damage and one hit towers at minute 20. Oh, what? You just stack the Insatiable Hunger or what? You can recast it before, if you recast it before it runs out, the damage still ticks up. Okay, that has to be removed. That has to be nerfed. That's really hilarious though, but that has to be nerfed. <laughs> I don't think you should ever be able to, to continuously buff with this. That's fucking hilarious, but yeah, that's stupid. 
It's not even hard. Just buy just buy Octarine and have a Coddle. <laughs> Sounds so it's so fucking dumb. Base armor is decreased by three on Centaur. Base health regen is increased by three point seventy five though. Return damage is decreased from fifteen to sixty to fifteen to forty five. Stampede damage is rescaled from. 175 to 325 percent uh, of strength to 200 250 and 300 percent slow duration is increased and rework these are kind of nerfs and then reworked scepter uh grants a new ability hitch a ride center tosses an ally into a cart hitched behind him while in oh f did fucking slacks ride this while in the cart the ally can still cast and attack normally, but cannot move independently or be targeted by opponents. Non-targeted effects can still affect the hitched ally, increase the attack range of the hitched melee heroes by 200, and mana cost is 75 and cooldown is 60, duration is 8. What the fuck? That's what Quinn said also. Uh, we, we need to look at this. I, I can't... Nice. We can hitch a ride? Overall, though, Centaur got nerfed. The other changes were nerfs, which kind of surprises me because I don't feel like Centaur is very good. All right, well, we're we're gonna buy a travel because you need to ride in style. Come here. What the fuck is this? I can't even select him to tell him to auto attack. Oh, there we go. Wait, let me let me do it again. I need to auto attack. <laughs> the fuck is this? This is a scepter. I mean, the scepter is probably pretty big though, because he can like save people. They can't be targeted, right? You cannot auto attack them, correct? Yeah, you cannot hit them while they're on the cart. They're safe. Honestly, the shard is like this. Agnims is really strong. Th this is a really strong Agnims. Not gonna lie, it's it's very very powerful. Worth noting is that uh, I'm not sure if you can even heal. Can you even heal him? Like, what if I'm playing... What if I'm playing Bane and I want to, like, Nightmare? I guess I can't Nightmare him. But, okay, let's let's just say we're playing uh, Oracle. And we want to heal. And you're an ally. And... Okay. So... Get this. Get this. Can I even... Nope, you can't heal him. Can you heal him here? You cannot! Okay, interesting. Interesting. Um, well, for sure we learned something. That, that's an interesting scepter. I definitely think the scepter is super good. The rest of the changes are nerfs though, Tin. So that's weird. Yeah, I guess you can shoot yourself across the map and shit with like Snapfire, uh, like picking up the centaur when he has a hitched ride ally. Yeah, I'm sure non-targeted heals probably work the same way non-targeted enemy abilities uh, are supposed to damage. Let's keep going. Talent, uh, talent, reality rift pull distances from 200 to 25. And life steal slightly improved, and the strength is replaced with minus 75%. Phantasm damage, illusion damage taken. Wow. Wow, that is a good talent. That is a really good talent. What? Those illusions are so tanky. What? That that's pretty huge. Okay, Chen. Surely Chen got nerfed. Bonus attack speed to allies decreased from 30 to uh, 120 to 25 to 100. Reworked to Scepter. Grants Persuaded units new uh, active ability Martyrdom. Creature sacrifice itself to perform a single target Hand of God on a chosen ally. Uh, global cast range, cooldown 8 shared between all creatures. What? What? Uh, what? Isn't that insane? Am I going crazy here? Isn't that insane? 8 second cooldown on just Chen ulting? Like, yeah. Sure, you have to sacrifice some creeps. You can literally just have some creeps parked in base and just use them to heal. Th this sounds busted. Trade off losing some auras. Well, in some games you can't even keep your creeps. Can skeletons do it? Sure, if you took over skeletons, but skeletons have a summon time. So, uh, I mean, they need to be persuaded units. And if you persuade a skeleton, he's still gonna time out and die at some point. 
I suppose. Uh, but yeah, um, sure. 200 health is replaced with minus two second uh, precision teleport delay. Precision, holy precision bonus damage is uh, decreased. Uh huh. Holy precision max units and uh, charges replaced with hand of God applies a strong dispel. Yeah, because that was the old. Wait, so you have your. Wasn't that straight up his old agonims? That he got the strong dispel? Wasn't that his entire agonims? I don't think his Aghanims did anything else, right? It was legit just a strong dispel. Or am I wrong? I think he just got strong dispel in the previous one, right? So you're telling me he just got an entire Aghanim Scepter it at 25 talons? It seems I've been smoking some really good stuff, and we are yet at the C letter. Yeah. He just got that as a 25 talent, and he's now able to perform it more freely because he can do it with the creeps, the martyrdom, which is a hand of God. Uh, so you, you can just have five fucking strong dispels ready at level 25 for your carry. Sure, sure, we'll kill the enemy carry. We just have to go on him and force out the first eight second cooldown ability. And then we need to hex him or go on him again, forcing out the ulti of Chen and then kill him before the eight seconds of the first strong dispel has passed because then he can strong dispel again and all during this he's gonna heal for like a million hp because it provides a passive hp region and a giga hp when he uses it how the fuck do you kill anything that chen protects no 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 what do you mean no 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 yes 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 dude that sounds insane okay well chen seems to have been massively buffed interestingly enough because his old Aghanim was dog shit, and now he actually has a really, really good one. And his late game potential is suddenly insane. Okay. Uh, let's see next then. Number of arrows is increased from 3 to 6. Damage per arrow from 65% to 55 to 65%. So, a big buff here, comparing the, um, the 3.50% or 3.65% arrows to 6... 50% arrows. Channel time uh, rescaled from 1.2 to 2.4 seconds to 2 seconds on all levels. So you're saying it's 400 milliseconds faster for the same damage on max level. Oh boy. Oh boy, that's that's a big buff. That's a big buff for the boy clinks. Um, and he gets minus 5% on like the best talent in the entire game. Wow. Okay, yeah, I mean, keep this level 1 with Maelstrom. Yeah, exactly. Get Maelstrom. You now have 6 auto attacks on it anyway. You can keep it level 1 for value. You could. You probably still want to level it, but the option is there. Overclocking. Rework Deceptor no longer refreshes all of Clockwork's abilities on cast and neither grants bonus movement speed and attack speed. Uh, while overclocking is active, all of Clockwork's abilities are supercharged. Battery assault damages and stuns all enemies within its radius. Oh my god. Power cogs increase Clockwork's attack speed by 250% while inside while Clockwork is inside. And Rocket Flare has its cooldown decreased to three seconds and shoots two additional flares to either side of the targeted area. What the fuck? Increases the hookshot stun radius and duration by 50%. Wait, stun radius and duration? Does that change the landing distance as well? Or is it I guess not? Uh, when overclocking expires, clockwork is done for 3 seconds, not 4. Buff, 13 seconds duration, 15 second cooldown. Jesus, that sounds really good. Especially with the new Aghanims. That sounds insane. And then, uh, level 10 talent is less cooldown on the cogs. Yeah, that sounds crazy. No longer stores allied mana on Crystal Maiden cast. Allies within a 1200 radius of Crystal Maiden receive two times the mana region. Okay. Mana region bonus is rescaled from 0 0.5 to 2 to 0 0.6 to 1.5. And self bonus factor is increased to 4. Okay. Um, sure. I mean, she still loses out a bit on this herself because she also got the mana from casting spells before. So CM getting four mana now instead, or four times factor of this, 
instead of you know like this it doesn't make up for it like because this is just gonna be six still you already had six so cm is gonna have less mana now i, I suppose not because she gets she's an ally within 2x does she also get i wonder if she counts as allies within 1200 radius Do, does she count i guess she does if so she gets two times this what, so she gets 12 mana regen from this? I assume so. Hmm. If so, then she's completely fine. Mid CM, maybe. Uh, and Frostbite cast range instead of uh, Arcanora mana per cast. Okay. Cooldown is also increased on Freezing Field. Sure. Oh, she doesn't? You doubt that she counts? And no, she doesn't? Okay, so if she doesn't count, then CM just lost a bit of mana. In order to be able to give more mana to people who are close to her. But not really more mana to people who are close to her. Eh, strange. Strange. It's like Chen gets this giga buff while he's super popular in the current patch. And then CM is like, eh. <laughs> eh, you know. Fuck CM. Uh, Alright, let's keep going. Let's keep going. We have... Uh, <laughs> we have Darkseer. Uh, cast range is increased from 600 to 800 on Iron Shell. Rework the shard, searched units leave behind 150 radius trail that lasts for seven seconds, slows enemies around it. Norm Wait, normal punish is now granted by scepter. Oh shit, okay. Okay, so the shard is a trail. 150 radius trail for that slows enemies and deals damage. Okay. An ability can put on auto cast to disable the trail, sure. Then normal punch is part of the scepter. Uh, illusion damage equals to replica damage of the current level of the wall of replica. Min damage is increased from 10 to 50. Max damage is 300 to 450. Illusion spawn delay is much quicker and cooldown is a lot lower. But... I don't know about that. I mean, yeah, you have the punch. But the punch is... It is stronger now than it was before, but is it shard to agonims stronger? I don't know about that. This is a huge nerf, I think. His old shard was insanely good, and this agonim scepter is weak, and the old agonim scepter is just gone. I guess it's now built into talents, maybe? His armor is replaced with 50 radius AoE. And the radius AOE, or the radius AOE, the, the radius uh, for Iron Shell is changed with the HP. And then the HP, or the two charges, is instead of the parallel wall. So you cannot do the parallel wall. You don't have that crazy refresher late game potential. And it's a 25 talent to get two Iron Shells? What? I want to say that this is overall a big nerf to Darkseer, in my opinion. Big nerf. Like, yeah, this shard is pretty okay. It's actually pretty good. The old shard was also really good. Normal punch was insanely strong. Aghanim Scepter is now somehow built into level 25 talent? Who cares about having two iron shell charges when you're level 25? It's just so late. Uh, I don't know. I, I think Darkseer got cucked. Um, yeah. No, not happy if I'm a Darkseer picker, but I'm not a Darkseer picker, so <laughs> I don't give a fuck. Uh, Dark Willow. Uh, spawn delay is decreased on the Bramble Mace, so even I can aim it. Fantastic. Cursed Crown mana cost is uh, decreased. Th I mean, that's a lot faster. The mana cost is decreased by quite a bit as well. 30 less mana. And then Terrorized Duration is replaced with Bedlam Pierces Spell Immunity. Hmm. I mean, that's a lot better as an alternative. Yes, Terror Restoration was good, but being able to pierce BKB uh, is pretty big for Dark Willow. Yeah, that's a nice level 25 talent. One less base armor on Dawnbreaker. When casting Starbreaker with Shard, Dawnbreaker will start moving towards the area instead of standing still. Still has free movement. Yeah, okay, so that's a quality of life change because she stood still before, which was dumb. Um, cast point improved on the hammer. Cast range is decreased by a lot on the lower levels and then uh, scales up scepter no i mean you max this anyway so this is not necessarily greatly impactful yeah it sucks on level one but already on level two it's almost the same level three it's very close to the same and level four it is the same and 
it is the ability that you max. So I don't think it's going to be a big impact. And the cast point is even improved. So I would say Celestial Hammer is stronger now than before. And the shard is also stronger because it's not going to be so buggy. Minus one armor, sure. But Scepter now allows to move the target area with a speed of 200. <laughs> you move the target? Wow. So he straight up pretty much gave her minus one armor. That That's the reaction to Dawnbreaker being like insanely strong lately. Minus one armor. Fuck it. Head in the sand. Okay. I mean... Okay, you move the, the, the Guardian. Interesting. Um, shallow Grave duration is decreased to 3.5 seconds and 5 seconds instead of 5.5. And Shadow Wave heal damage is decreased from 80 to 140, 60 to 135. I mean, that's what has been very popular. The attack speed is replaced with 350 attack range against poison-touched enemies. I like that. Ooh, I like that. It's stupid, but I like that. Um, okay. Level 20 talent uh, heal on Shallow Grave End is, is decreased from 250 to 225. Interesting. Interesting, interesting. Um... Agility one point or fourteen plus one point eight to sixteen point sixteen plus two point zero. Okay, bit more starting, bit more starting agi and more agi over time. And her movements be Jesus. <laughs> what happened to you? Oh my God! What happened to you? DP, where is your speed? What? Okay, did they give it back? Yeah. Okay, they they give back exorcism. Okay, says so when she pops ulti, she's scary. Doesn't deal health, uh, max health less damage anymore. Damage is increased from 10 to 16 to 20 to 80. So she does not counter high HP heroes in the same way anymore. Uh, and she's not super fast all the time. But she's very fast when she pops ulti. Hmm. Hmm. I mean, this is going to be much nicer for killing supports now. Wait, it's not even... Wait, is it not... Oh, it's not when you pop it. It's just by skilling it. Ah, oh, it's just by skilling it even. It's not even when it's active. That's very strong. Interesting, interesting. Okay, so max health damage is more flat damage. Sure. Now deals damage upon arrival based on the distance between start and end point. Min damage... Uh, is 50 at 0 units. So you always take 50 damage. Max damage is 150, 200, 250, 300. What? Jesus, what a buff. What? What is that buff, dude? What the fuck? Buff. Fuck off. What? Never mind the fact that he counters Blink Dagger with this. But... Just look at it as a nuke. It's a 300 damage nuke. Out of nowhere. What? Dude, that's such a big buff. And then Glimpse Arrival damage replaced with Glimpse Max damage. Sure. Okay, let's keep going and see what we see. That's crazy, dude. Disruptor's back. Officially back, boys. Dude, that, that's massive. Uh, agility increased from 11 plus 0.9 to 15 plus 1.5. Okay, much more agile. Devourer is no longer dispelled on death. Okay. Reworked the scepter. Enemies within 325 radius from the target also suffers the effects of doom. Also allows it to be self-cast to affect enemies around the caster? That's insane. That's insane. That's... But that's insane, Ice Frog. That this makes no sense. What? What do you mean? No, 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 dude. What, what are you gonna do? What? Yes. Okay. So, hypothetically here, say we wanna try and go on Doom. 
right? We spawn an enemy shaker. We level us to max, we level us to max. Say we wanna go on Doom, but if I have Aghanims, I can just self-cast Doom. And if you attempt anything in my safe space, you're doomed. But then you can go out, but if you get close... Ah, uh, this is legit the strongest thing we've seen so far. The, this is the, definitely the strongest thing we've seen so far. And the effect looks fucking insane, dude! And you get to hear the sound of dooming people when you walk close to them? Blink dagger. This is insane. This, this is actually so fucking strong. What? This is this OP Night Stalker. And then you take the Doom cooldown talent, minus 35. They fucking changed it, didn't they? Because he used to have a duration one. Minus 25, 110 second cooldown, 16 second duration? What? Etherlands? Etherlands will not work. Yeah, I mean, so if you... I, I Sorry, I, I need to go back, back in here. If you... Do this... You're not even doomed. Like, we're not even doomed ourselves. We can still cast spells, guys. We can still blink. Like... We can farm with it. <laughs> oh my god, dude. That's insane. That's absolutely insane. That is so insane. I this 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 is the strongest thing so far by far. Let's see his talents. Hey Bruno, magic resistance is replaced with the devour grants fifteen percent magic resistance. Okay, and scorched earth talent is changed to movement speed, and the movement speed uh is changed to doom cooldown. Doom DPS is changed to scorch. Scorched Earth cooldown. And then the cleave is changed with Doom Applies Break. Oh my god. Break. Oh. Oh my god, dude. That's terrifying. Jesus, dude. Doom. I, okay, I, I'll say it like this. Keep an eye on Entity right now, chat. Entity are playing with Pure. Pure likes to play Doom. Pure is Giga Tad. And uh, I think this could be very interesting. I think there's a big chance that Entity will experiment with Doom coming up. Um, they already played Doom quite a bit. Yeah, Save Light as well, of course. So, yeah, also keep a, an eye on TSM. Interesting. Yeah, well, Doom is super strong. Let's keep going. Mana cost decrease from uh, 90 to 120, 90 to 105. The attack damage reduction, sure, not too exciting. Bonus movement speed is increased on the higher level dragons. Uh, 20 strength talent is replaced with 75% breathe fire damage cast range in dragon form. That's cool. That's cool. I, I like it. I actually think I would take that. Yeah, I would definitely take that. It's really long cast range and the the it's a cone effect longer cast range on a cone effect huge aoe and on top of that the damage increase is also nice so yeah we definitely want that um that's really cool uh multi-shot arrow damage is increased from 85 to 160 percent to 100 to 160 percent the 50 percent blind is changed with 15 percent gust self movement speed and then gust width is replaced with gust reveals in this units doesn't reveal words and uh multi-shot bonus damage is decreased not too exciting changes for uh drow but i think to be support drow is going to be pretty happy about this stronger uh multi-shot and movement speed is definitely better than blind um and also revealing invis i mean don't have to buy dust poggers <clears throat> Boulder Smash now has the same targeting rules as for the Remnant. When cast, selects the nearest entity to smash, prioritizing Remnants within range and then closest units. Sure. Some quality of life change. Boulder Smash Distance replaced with 20 magnetized DPS. 18% uh, spell amp is replaced with Geomagnetic Grip targets allies. 
and then they have 25% spell amp at the end. I mean, if you get all the way to level 25 on Earth Spirit, holy fuck, man, 25% spell amp? That's a nutty fucking, uh, nutty fucking talent. 20 talent grip allies, so nice. Yeah, I mean, for sure. For support, this is huge. For mid Earth Spirit, core Earth Spirit, I think it's still nice. Uh, but yeah, I think this is a skill rewarding. Fisher cooldown is decreased from 21 to 15 seconds to 18 to 15 seconds. Talent Fisher damage is increased from 80 to 90 and base damage from 30 to 40. Core shaker. We should see more of it. More agi. So many heroes are getting agi. More agi on ET. Um, Stomp is slightly stronger. And magic resistance is replaced with echo stomp damage. Echo stomp damage is replaced natural order radius. Okay. Not too exciting changes, I think, for ET, but okay. Fair enough. More agi on Elder Titan or uh, on Ember Spirit as well. Less movement speed, more HP regen, and better turn rate. Flame Guard mana costs decreased. So it's quite cheap. Activate Flame Remnant is also cheaper until higher levels. And Fire Remnant cooldown is increased from 0 seconds to 0 0.5. That seems high. That seems odd. What an odd nerf. I don't like that. Like if you want to insta burst someone or if you want to, I don't know. Yeah, like the, the, the Giga Chain Remnant play. I don't know. Yeah, you can no longer spam all your remnants at once. No, I mean, not immediately. I kind of liked that you could do that, though, because it's such a sacrificial play. But I guess it's going to nerf the refresher in a way. The refresher play, but... Mm. Yeah, uh, I mean, fair enough. Uh, duration is decreased from 12 seconds to 9 to 12 seconds on the little attendance. Little friends, re reworked the shard, now grants a new ability. Little friends, all creeps, enemy, ally, and neutral within 1200 range of the target will attack the target with 100 bonus attack speed and 100% bonus movement speed for 6 seconds. Mana cost 75, cooldown 20, cast range 600, cannot target buildings, target is not attacked by either heroes nor illusions. The fuck? All creeps, enemy or ally. So she just straight up counters push strats. If you're doing any form of like zoo strat pushing, forget about it. She buys shard and it's over. You are done. This is like a nasty version of Winter's Curse. Because it's giga AoE and they have a... Uh, 100% bonus movement speed and 100 bonus attack speed. Like, whatever is next to you is gonna fuck you up. Yeah, it also has no cooldown at all. I mean, Jesus. Interesting. Interesting. I bet you could even do stuff with this, like, if Treant is, or if you're in a split pushing, but he's not even there, maybe you can just target this on, like, a creep and make his Treant run back away from the tower and stuff. That's crazy, dude. That's crazy. You're also stacking them up. Uh, Sproink cooldown is decreased by one second. Ooh, I like Sproink. Sproink is fun. The movement speed is replaced with 30 movement speed during nature's attendant. I, yeah, I don't like that so much. But, but uh, I mean, little friend sounds fucking terrifying. This, yeah, I mean, Enigma. Yeah, Enigma would get wrecked, dude. Oh, if I play against Fly, I'm just going to pick Enchantress. <laughs> I'm going to pick Enchantress and just make his little Eidolons kill me. Oh my god, dude. And Ench gets the credit if they kill. Oh my god. Rework to Shard increases Malphys stun duration by 0 0.35 seconds. And at every tick on an enemy hero creates an Eidolon which cannot split, but still get, refreshed, get a refresh duration after a set amount of attacks. Okay. Okay, um, I mean, the stun is nasty, because now you don't have it as a talent here, but you have option for going for something else. Black Hole reworked the cool Deceptor, uh, deals additional damage equivalent to 3.5% max health and pulls all enemies 
within 1200 AUE at a speed of 175 units being pulled in the additional um, uh, in the additional scepter radius can still move. Okay, so the shard is now built into the built into the agonims. So yeah, you you're kind of getting the value of the old agonims and the shard. Hmm. Interesting. More like a revert to the old ags. It's not a revert to the old ags. I mean, not really, because you have the shard as well. Yeah, a new shard. I mean, you can summon more Aedlons with that. And if you get stunned by that, you just get Aedlons dropped on you as you try and run away. <clears throat> Sounds annoying. Sounds really annoying. And then you have black hole damage per second that he can take now instead of this, if he wants to. Uh, midnight pulse radius, 350 health, and the health is 200 radius. Yeah, I mean, these are these are Enigma buffs for sure, I feel. I feel. I think Fly would agree. We'll see what he says. Time walk range is increased by 150, and the shard bonus range is decreased by 100. And time dilation slow per cooldown is up by 3%. Ooh, on the talent, that is. Stroke of Fate. Okay, this hero is garbage. Grimstroke is legit garbage. Let's see what happens to him. Stroke of Fate slow duration is increased from 1.5 to 1.75. Kind of nice, bit more slow. Soulbind cooldown is reduced, uh, decreased from 100 to 50 to 90 to 50. It's barely a buff, but okay. And level 15, 15% spell amp is replaced with plus 20% soulbind spell damage. So, I assume only spells that get doubled by the soul bind. I don't know, man. The fifteen percent spell amp is big, though. Like, this this is a big spell amp talent, and this. I mean, it's big if you combo, but a lot of times, even when teams in professional games pick Grimstroke, they're not specifically doing it to dump spells into the soul bind. Uh, this doesn't feel like it dude also i have to test it again i'll test it now because i'm gonna comment on something here let's see if this is even fixed a, a big reason why i think this hero is also garbage is this if it wasn't fixed yet but we'll find out i set my brush so this should heal Where's my heal? Legit where? Well now. Forward. Only works on heroes? Yeah, but it's not supposed to only work on heroes. It doesn't specifically say anywhere that it's supposed to only work on heroes. That that was just randomly changed at some point. It does heal at the end, doesn't it? Nope. It dispels at the end. But it doesn't heal. Now it's just refresher region, by the way. If you see my HP going, going. up, it's because of refresher. But yeah, Nothing. yeah. So it doesn't heal from creeps, and that is a huge reason why he got so much weaker. But yes, even beyond that, I think Grimstroke is still garbage, dude. He is a forty-three percent win rate or some measly shit like that. This hero is absolute garbage, and this is a pretty small buff, like. 0.25 seconds more slow but no damage 10 seconds less cooldown level one five seconds less cooldown level two same cooldown level three okay i mean it's nice but it's not that good and changing your 15 percent spell amp on all your stuff for 20 percent more sp spell amp on soul bound spells that sounds garbage that, that actually sounds really bad i think they could just have done that that Soulbind increases damage taken for the target. Like, if they added this, not even a spell damage, just if you get Soulbound, you take 20% more damage, I still think he would not be very good. I still think he would be, like, maybe 48% win rate or 49. And that's if all the damage you do was 20% increase on Soulbound targets. Even then, I, I'm not sure that it would be strong enough. Hmm. Yeah, I think Grimstroke is still garbage. Rocket Barrage damage per rocket is rescaled from 7 uh, to 22%, from uh, to 6 to 
or why, why does that percent? Sorry, I'm tired. Um, mana cost is decreased from uh, 90 to to uh, 75 to 90. Level 10, flat cannon, uh, flat cannon range is replaced with movement speed during rocket barrage. And the movement speed is replaced with flat cannon damage. Flat cannon damage is sort of nice, but is it even kind of, I guess, speed during... Ro I mean, they're definitely making like caster gyro a little bit more playable with this. Two more damage per rocket and speed is definitely better than this talent. But yeah. Uh, okay, interesting. Initial projectile speed is increased on the acorn shot. Projectile speed is increased uh, by the same amount of bushwhack, so it's not gonna fuck with your muscle memory. That's nice. I like that they keep that, you know, uh, that parody between it, you know, like it's the same. Uh, Hunter's Boomerang now granted by shard. Damage decreased from 350 to 200. Spell amplification is decreased from 25% to 20% and no longer reduces status resistance. Damn, that's a good shard. Decoy is now granted by Scepter. When cast turns Hoodwink invisible, increases her movement speed by 15%, creates a decoy of her. Oh, it's PL, dude. Uh, that starts charging up Sharpshooter? What the fuck? Starts charging up Sharpshooter, aiming at the nearest enemy visible in 3000 range. If attacked, targeted by a spell, the decoy is... Uh, destroyed and a lesser bushwhack is cast towards the attacker. If the decoy was not attacked, it shoots the sharpshooter in the direction it was aiming, dealing 60% of regular damage. I assume it has the same cooldown that decoy has in the game now, or what? Let me see the cooldown on this ability. Decoy has like no cooldown. What What's the cooldown? Sick, eh? 30. 30. Is the cool one. okay? Yeah, I mean, we might as well test it, I guess. Stun guy, press decoy and press ulti, and then yeah, exactly. I think that's what you do. What if you, what if you have Agnes blessing and an enemy give you levels? Where the fuck do you go? He's hiding. Oh, yeah, so you mean that we like... <laughs> Can we make the illusion end early? It can't end early, right? No. No, the illusion is always gonna take its full time. Still though. Yeah, I mean, it's probably more like this. The combo is probably something more like this. You, like, actually just run in and you're fast because you're decoyed. And then you W them and then the ulti comes in and then you can ulti with your main hero as well. <clears throat> Does the illusion move if the target moves? Oh, it keeps aiming. I thought you just kept... I thought you had to skill shot it. Oh, it's legit aiming. How good is it? How good is the aim? Is it like... Missed. I mean... I mean, yeah, it can miss, but this is a 425 movement speed. So on a slow movement speed, it's gonna hit pretty easily, I think. Like if we're just, if we're just even at this speed, depends how close you run as well. Like the closer you run, the easier you get hit. Turn rate was pretty fast. Uh, turn rate is normal. It turns at the same rate as normal uh, hoodwink. But the cool part is, it fucking auto finds them. You don't even need to click at them. And of course, when they run Fog of War, it stops aiming. But you can do this, and then... <laughs> so, like, the moment it sees anything, it's gonna start aiming at it. So it doesn't matter if they Fog of War for a little bit as you run in. Huh. Yeah, it does get Fog of War. Fog of War. But if it sees it for a bit, it's gonna acquire and aim at that. 
True. It's the peel counter. You can use this to find the real peel. Interesting. Very strong. Uh, bushwhack cooldown reduction decreased from uh, four to three. Scurry uh, one second replaced with 40% scurry evasion when active. Scurry invisibility is replaced with bushwhack damage. Sure. One more armor on Huskar. Always a mistake. Fixed Aghanim shard mistakenly granting uh, plus 65 damage. <laughs> okay. Um, max strength as health region increased from 16 to 70 to 25 to 70%. Sure. Scepter cast range is decreased from 850 to 750. Inner fire town duration. Sure. Life break cooldown reduction is increased from 3 to 4. Giving Huskar base armor and giving Huskar 9% more on his on his uh, max strength as health region. Oh, Huskar. What a hero. Sure. Uh, deafening Blasts. Damage increased from uh, 20 to 260, 60 to 300. Cooldown is 10 seconds lower on Ghost Walking. Duration is, incre is decreased from 100 to 1 minute. Oh no. I can't run away, run around for 100 seconds anymore in my ghost walk. The slow radius is increased. Sure, the mana cost is decreased. Sure, sunstrike damage. Ooh, that that slight damage increase may seem like a low impact thing, but it's pure damage first of all, and it's 20 on level one already. More, it does make a difference. It does make a difference. Not a huge difference, but it does make a difference. Um, the Chaos Meteor damage is replaced with 6 second Tornado cooldown. Okay, so Quaswex is getting quite a quite a buff there. And Ghostwalk uh, cooldown talent is replaced with EMP Mana Burn. Oh, I guess you have to choose then. <laughs> hmm. Okay. And then Tornado cooldown is replaced with 80%... 8... <laughs> Excuse me? 80% Chaos Meteor damage. Okay. Okay, now I could see the now I could see the triple meatball being fucking terrifying. Oh my god, dude. Do not touch the meatball. I mean, 40% was already a lot of damage. 80%? That is a spicy meatball. It really is. Tether heal mana transfer uh decrease from 75 to 120% to 60 to 120%. Sure. Mana cost is decreased from 120 to 150, 100, 130. Attack speed is rescaled from 25 to 115, 35 to 110. And health regen is replaced with 15% tether enemy slow. That's kind of nice. And spirit damage is increased by 10. Mm, okay. I don't know. So, so some stuff stronger, some stuff weaker. Hard to say exactly how this is going to play, but uh, just minor changes to Wisp overall. I do think the health regen talent was nice on him, though. Um, strength gain is decreased from 2.8 to 2.5. Ice path now path now stays on the ground for 2.6 to 3.5 seconds. Max stun duration is still the same. Ah, so you can stun stuff if they walk in a little bit later. And cooldown is decreased from 21 to 9 to 18 to 9. Ah, so there's there's a full second where you have to not go into the ice path. Because you're still gonna get hit by a max duration. That I mean that it just became one second better at area denial. Liquid frost, max health as damage per second is decreased uh, 2.5 to 2 percent. Okay. Spell amp is replaced with 10 percent and 10 dual breath movement and attack speed slow. Ooh, that's a pretty good one. And the attack range is slightly nerfed. Big buffs to Jakiro. Actually, overall, I mean, this is a big buff. This is a nerf, of course, but uh, I also think this is a pretty nice talent. Yeah, zoning ice paths. Yeah, zoning ice paths are going to be really good. I mean, your uptime is so good. 3.5 seconds um, denial with 9 second cooldown. Your uptime is very, very good on that. And so many heroes are getting normalized to 300 movement speed, I've noticed. Shard movement speed increase uh, is not as high anymore, only 75. Heal radius is decreased on the healing ward and plus two wards hit to kill. Ha, huh. healing ward. Yes, yes. Well, 
I'm pretty happy that Juggernaut doesn't have the health talent on level 25 anymore because that was a disgustingly good talent. Now he has the healing wards thing and then he has the Omni Slash thing, right? Yeah. So much weaker level 25 talent, worse shard, worse movement speed, and worse healing ward. Big nerfs to Juggernaut. Uh, cooldown increased by 20 seconds on the ghost form, illuminate heal from 40 to 60% to 50 to 70%. Uh, level 10 talent, 20 movement speed replaced with minus two second illuminate cooldown. Okay, I mean, I'm down with this, dude. Fuck Caudal. Uh, I'm so down with this. Nice. No more mid Caudals, really. Feels good. Yeah, I'm down with that. Uh, Links of Legend. Thank you for the Prime sub. Let's keep going. We have uh, Kunkka damage uh, increased from 75 to 300 to 80 to 320 damage. So a bit more damage on a torrent. Move speed slow is increased from 25 to 40% on level 1 already. Wow, the level 1 torrent is so much better than before. 15% more slow and 5 more damage. Uh, level 10 talent, the plus 0.4 knockup and stun duration is replaced with 25% uh, X marks spot movement speed. And then... 30 damage is replaced with Tidebringer, applies 60% slow. No, 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 no. 60% slow for one second in that fucking AoE. Oh. Mm. Oof. Okay, and then he, of course, gets the damage talent anyway, still. And torrent damage is replaced with 30% torrent knockup stun duration. Okay. Interesting. Ugh. Uh, what do we have? Shard bonus armor per creep is increased from 0 0.5 to 1. Shard bonus armor per hero is increased from 4 to 5. What? I already thought this shard was good. I like this shard. This shard is really nice. Um, it just got twice as good against creeps and, a, you know, a 25% increase against heroes as well. Wow. Okay. Well, I'm definitely gonna buy more Legion shards. I've been enjoying them a lot already. Let's see what they do to their talents. Um, cast range. Uh, cast range should increase from 150 to 200, 250, 300. Wow, Duel gets 50 more cast range innately on level 1 already. And double the cast range on max level. And the Duel cast range is replaced with Duel bonus damage on level 10. Ooh, you know I want that. And moment of current proc chance is from 8 to 10%. And the uh, bonus damage at the end is replaced with 50% with moment of courage lifesteal. Well, it's going to be harder to make those giga damage games. But on the other hand, we get scaling early. I mean, you basically turn a level 1 duel into a level 2 duel. And then you get level 3 duel and level 12. Uh, seems pretty nice. Seems pretty nice. I mean, these are big buffs to Legion. Huge buffs. Cast range innately, big. Being able to take damage, huge. You still have the, the shard talents and the shard is incentivized even more. Or the shard talents, but the, the nuke talents and then the shard. And then you have the, the fucking 50% increased uh, lifesteal. You're going to heal so much. Base damage increased by 2 on less rack mana per second. Uh, cost now starts ticking after 1 second instead of upon activation. Activation, activation mana cost still applies. Mana cost per second increased from 20 to 40, 60. 25, 45, 65. And the talent double book edict explosions is decreased from 30 to 25. Okay. I mean, this sounds fair. Sounds like good changes on honestly overall. A uh, little bit easier to use it than to farm. Um, no more, no more toggling ulti for turbo damage, Sag. Uh, I mean, it doesn't say that you can't do that, right? You say that there's no more toggling ulti for turbo damage, but where where does it say that? Mana per second starts taking after one second, and mana cost per second is changed doesn't say anything about that no it's if anything better for doing that because it's yeah the the activation cost is still the same 
and the tick is only starting after one second and it's higher so no the opposite way around toggling ulti for damage is now much better to do than before um so yeah that, that's definitely buffed whoa what the fuck suddenly we're looking at lich so yeah it's, it's better than before um interesting let's go to lich then Lich Sinister Gaze is rescaled from 1.4 to 2.3, 1.3 to 2.5. Okay. Mana cost is from 80 to 50 to 80. And uh, Mad Rain rescaled from 10 to 25% to 10% uh, per second. Okay. So 2.5. Sure. Sure, sure, sure. Okay. Fair enough. And then Ice Spire. Ice Spire uh, requires 5 hero hits or 10 creep hits to be destroyed casting frost shield and spire will heal it by one hero hit per tick Ooh, it just got so annoying to kill the ice spire it got so annoying to kill it now uh uh lit lich not not huge buffs but the, the the shard got better yeah i mean it got slightly worse perhaps in the very early game and then better in mid and late game you just tested it if you toggle you lose mana quickly yeah i mean you did that before as well though i mean yeah you, you're gonna lose mana faster than if you don't toggle if you just leave it on that's gonna lose mana less quickly than toggling it however there's a thing with the pulse nova where if you quickly toggle it on and off again you can make the damage ticks hit faster than if you don't do it and because of that, spam toggling the Pulse Nova can actually be a higher damage output, which can yield higher kill potential. <laughs> uh, but yes, it's going to cost more mana to do so than not doing so. Uh, anyway, you can sit down and test the mechanic specifically. I'm not going to do that now. I'm not going to care about it. Maybe to change something that's not listed here. So all I say is only assuming that things have not been changed in a shadow patch. Or that there's any shadow changes to it. But that's how it works. Uh, to my knowledge, until now. Lifestealer. Tell me why did they fuck Nikes? Yeah. Bonus attack speed is increased from 20 to 50% to 25 to 70%. Okay. And then talents. The 30 attack speed is replaced with 150 infest damage. Okay. And the rage movement speed is increased from 10 to 12%. Ghoul frenzy slow is increased from 10 to 15%. Evasion is replaced with 15 percent infest target movement speed health movement speed and health um well the evasion talent being gone fucking sucks for carry life stealer i don't think you care much about this compared to that um i mean the slow the slow is nice the more attack speed is nice if you look at it like ghoul frenzy bonus attack speed you have 20 more here you're almost getting this for free this talent or you could take this talent and you know say that you're almost getting it for free but losing the evasion is kind of sad for him i guess but a lot of evasion talents have been removed over time okay i heard that lena scepter is dank let's see flame cloak reworked scepter grants a new ability flame cloak lena gets flying movement Increasing her spell damage by 30%. And magic resistance by 35%. Cooldown 25 seconds cannot be dispelled. Talents 25. Uh, talent 125 attack range. To talent has been replaced with Laguna Blade. Pure damage and pierces spell immunity. I, I need to see it. We need to go to the lab. Yeah, no duration is listed. I don't even know what to think of this. Six seconds. Six seconds of 35% spell amp. Uh, or no, 35% magic resistance, 30% spell amp. And flying. Shouldn't be more exciting than that. But does it have a visual? How does it look? Do we have flying vision when we're flying? There's so much to figure out. Do I fly? Okay, we do not have flying vision while we're flying. We're still walking vision. So, there's that. But, other than that, we do fly, I guess. Just gonna spawn some units here and level ourselves up. So we can go at actual Lina speed. Whee! 
the path. Interesting. I mean, it's very low cooldown. You can fly over terrain. You can make yourself very hard to kill with this. And also your possible spell damage. I mean, I like playing Spellcaster Lina. This is 30% spell amp. That's a lot. Yes. But I don't know. I mean, mainly Lina is going to be very hard to go on. I think not even using it to initiate necessarily always. You can use it maybe to hunt. I mean, it's pretty low cooldown. But then just playing close to a cliff, you just like fly over the cliff. Like, what are you going to do? And then you can like come back in, like fucking teabag them. Yeah, 30% more Laguna damage. And then you have Laguna as uh, a talent as well. That it's, I mean, pa pair it up. I think pair it up with this and you have a really fucking strong ulti, right? Like what's, what's, uh, say, say E-Blade Lina? Say we don't go E-Blade, say we go Kai Assange for whatever reason. Or Kai and Yasha, because we hit. Say we go for this and, uh, yes. uh 1,170. One it's not bad. Not bad damage. I actually thought we would do more. 16%. Wait. Oh. Oh. Yes. Oh, okay. Well, I understand now why we didn't do more. We should do more. It's It fucking sets it to 30%. <laughs> okay, well. Valve? Valve? I think this doesn't work the way that you want it to work. I don't think you should set her spell amp to 30%. I think you should increase it by 30%. It's an interesting take, but like we can't do anything with... Like if I have Timeless Relic and this, I'm like, oh, I'm gonna get so strong. You know what's gonna happen? I'm gonna lower my spell amp by 1%. Wait, how it... Now it doesn't... What? Now it says... Now it works? Ish? Ish? No, this works, but this doesn't. What? Strange. Okay, so I get the time. I get the timeless damage, but I don't get the Kion Slash damage. Whatever, Gaben. Whatever. I mean, fucking jokes on me, I guess. Okay, so it doesn't stack with the Kaya Slash. So don't go Kaya Slash chat. Um, don't go Kaya <laughs> if you want to go Aghanims until that has been specifically fixed. It's probably gonna be a lot of patches immediately though. When a patch like this comes out, there's usually a lot of things. But yeah, that that seems extremely dumb. Seems extremely dumb. Um, let's see. Turn rate is improved for Lion. Okay. His uh, damage is replaced with Earth, Earth Spike damage. And movement speed is replaced with Mandarin Slow. No more mid Lion builds. Pippa sad. The Earth Spike is replaced with Mandarin Targets. Allies on 15 already. That's actually at a relevant time. Having that as level 20 talent fucking sucked. Well, no pun intended. But... Uh, now having it as a 15 talent, I think it's really reasonable to base a strat around it. Like get Medusa and just get your Lion to level 15 and he's ready to uh, simp. Uh, okay. Hex cooldown talent and then Earth Spike is replaced with Mana Drain deals damage equal to 150% of mana stolen? Damn. Okay, a 25 talent is really big. Yo, that 25 talent is actually really good. Wow. Yeah, the, the level 25 talent is insane. Much better than the range for sure. Because uh, it's so slow. Yeah, li Lion is, Lion is kind of kind of good now. Uh, Savage Roar. Uh, oh yeah, if you if you mana drain, then you can't BKB as well. So if Lion goes on someone uh, and mana drains them, they can't BKB. That's also worth mentioning. If he can drain all their mana or, well, you know, get them down to 49 mana before they can click it. Savage Roar is uh, duration reduced, but same on max level. Very small change to Lone Root. Rework the shard every time an enemy hero is hit by a beam. Luna's attack damage is increased by 15 for 12 seconds. It sounds like a lot. Uh, Lunar Blessing now receives global radius at night time. Okay. Bonus damage rescaled from 5, 15 to 35, 6, 14, and 28. Okay, slightly less, 
but each time an enemy hero is struck, you get 15. Okay. And the Lucent Beam cooldown reduction is from 3 to 2 seconds. The Talent Global Lunar Blessing uh, 200 Night Vision replaced with two Moon Glaives fired on Lucent Beam does not fire Glaives on beams from the... But... Okay, yeah. Fair, fair enough. Does not fire any Glaives from the beams from Eclipse. Yeah, that, that would be fucking insane. Interesting. It says Luna's attack damage, not bonus attack damage, is it? Luna's, Luna's attack damage is increased by 15. No, I mean, yeah, it doesn't say that that her... It doesn't specifically say her bonus damage is increased, but I mean, usually when something says your damage is increased, you're going to get that increase in green in bonus damage if you're gonna get a specifically base damage increase it's gonna say base damage there's no fucking way you're getting base damage increase from this um th there's no way but yeah they, they never bother to list that it's like not base damage because it's better to just list all the times so it is base damage it's so rare Okay, let's see. Base movement speed is changed on Lycan. Magic resistance is decreased from 70 to 40 to 70. Cripple now stacks with each proc. Permanent invisibility fade delay from 1.7 to 2 seconds. Howl is now global when cast during night. Jesus! Oh, that is a big buff. Howl is global during nighttime is a massive buff. Uh, actually, it, it is a massive buff, but it's also slightly bad. It's going to speed up enemy jungling. Hmm. Interesting. I mean, not really. Because it's also lowering their damage. But it's lowering the armor of the targets. I don't know. It's kind of weird. It's kind of weird. But uh, yeah, it's a buff. It's a buff overall for sure. A big buff. 30% um, shapeshift crit replaced with howl reduces total attack damage. What do you mean howl reduces total attack damage? Attack damage. So it just takes all your damage away? It just takes all your damage away? Is that... Is that what, what do you mean total attack damage? So all your base damage is re reduced or what? Is that what I'm understanding here? Prepare for battle. Go to battle. No, it still has damage. How oh, so like the bonus damage. Oh, 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 so not base damage because it normally reduces their base damage by, you know, that percent. But now you can reduce. I mean, if you have this, this is like a shaker with uh, enchant totem and two rapiers. Yeah. Sure, he doesn't have levels, but even if we level him up, if I do this... That didn't look like a fucking enchant totem double rapier hit. Considering that it normally should look like this. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> look at that damage. And then look back at this damage. Okay, that's actually a really good talent. That's a really good talent. Much better than the shape of crit. And it's global. Gee. Okay. Global during nighttime, that is. Well, okay, Lycan is pretty damn buffed, I want to say. I mean, that that's so good against certain heroes. It's going to be so hard to deal with Lycan. Like, that damage reduction is disgusting. At night time, zero damage global. Well, it's not zero damage. It's just, as, you know, assuming you have the right level 10 talent, it's a 60% damage reduction, but it is going to be 60% of your total damage, as opposed to 60% of your base damage. So yeah, it's a very big damage reduction, but you're still going to have 40% damage. Uh, but that's not very much. That's not very much. Base mana region is increased on uh, Magnus. The cooldown on RP is lower. Horn toss slow duration is uh, 
increased by quite a bit. And level 15 talent, the strength is replaced with 12 strength per hero hit with the RP for 15 seconds. 12 strength per hero hit with RP? So if you, if you land like two big RPs, you just have like a million strength. Like, oh, I did this. Look at all my <laughs> fucking flyers kind of round around with a uh, bonus 80 strength, you know? Interesting. Okay, well, let's see what happens to Marcy. Marcy is crazy. Let's see what happens there. Now slows for 20, 30, 40, 50% in, for three seconds instead of stunning. What? Throw distance is decreased. So she throws shorter. Rebound now stuns enemies in final area. Okay. Ally movement speed is decreased from 45% to 25. Yes, good. Landing damage is decreased. Landing effects. Hmm. So you jump them with rebound and then you throw them back and they're slowed from that. Pulse no longer slows the enemies. Each strike slows movement speed of the targets by 30% for two seconds. Um, base attack speed of the target as well. No longer applies a dispel on Marcy. Scepter now also applies a dispel when cast. Scepter cooldown reduction increased from 10 to 20 seconds. Interesting. So you have the stun on the rebound. Isn't that just further making the shard even weirder? Like... Marcy's shard is strange, yo. Like... I'm surprised her shard stayed the same as it already is. Isn't this making the shard even weirder? And where do you stun? You stun where you tossed the guy with the shard then? You don't stun where you land, but you stun where they land, I guess? Uh, it seems, it seems fucking weird, man. Um, two mana regen is replaced with 60 boss damage. And then you have... Armor is replaced with cast range. You have rebound cooldown, sidekick lifesteal, unleash movement speed, and rebound stun duration. That's pretty good level 20 talent for sure. Okay. Uh, it's kind of kind of strange, but okay, let's keep going. Mac has a spear from 110 to 140, 100 to 130. Yeah, they keep changing his mana costs up, down. God's Rebuke slow duration is increased by a half a second. Active redirect no longer uses a radius centered around Mars. Not only works if projectile targets are in a cone behind Mars or are within a hundred range of him. If targets are in a cone behind Mars, mm -hmm, or okay, so you can't just randomly fucking bend bullets come to you redirect range increased from 800 to 900 okay and spear damage is rescaled from from 100 to 200 75 to 225 level one arena seems so sad fixed flying units sometimes being able to escape from the arena aha so you say you're saying we cannot fly away from the arena now 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 it's like you're fucking stuck not just monkey king but like Everyone is fucking stuck. Oh boy. Okay. Level 10 talent, the bulwark uh, penalty is replaced with 30% bulwark active redirect chance. Chance? Isn't it? What? Bulwark active redirect chance? Active redirect no longer uses a radius. Not only works if projectile are in a cone behind Mars. There's a chance to it as well? I guess there was a chance to it already. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, wasn't it 70%? So now it's 100%, right? Yeah, wasn't it 70%? <clears throat> I guess. Yeah, so now if you cover someone, you can 100% cover them. Okay, that's kind of cool. The slow is replaced with 100 God's Rebuke distance. Ooh, interesting. And you already have some more slow here. Okay. Okay, okay. Physical damage amplification is rescaled from 40 to 50%, 35 to 55%. The attack speed is replaced with 15% Mystic Snake turn and movement speed slow. The split shot uh, damage is decreased by from 12 to 
and the Mystic Snake cooldown reduction from 1.5 to 2 seconds. Meeple! Anything exciting happening for my boy Meeple. 2.2 to 2.5 strength. Sure, stronger. And cooldown is decreased on... Uh, not decreased. Valve, I, I would I would not use the word decreased. We use big boy words rescaled here. This is not a decreased cooldown, excuse me. Uh, ransack health steal from creeps is decreased from 4 to 10 percent or 4 to 10 to 3 to 9 and uh, dig now has no channeling time and applies instantly cooldown is decreased from 50 to 40 health restored is decreased okay dude that's a good trade that's a good trade that's a lot better um, and level 25 health replaced with pack rat can equip any item What? Pack rat? Seven inventory slot. He gets one more inventory slot. Meepo gets an inventory slot. Well, this is a way to solve. Okay, so chats. Meepo Meepo has been very sad ever since neutral items were introduced because neutral items just don't work on Meepo. Like some items are decent and most of the items about like 85 percent are fucking garbage now they've added a way for meepo to actually use the neutral item slot and not just in a small way he put anything in his what that sounds crazy dude so you, you mean i can just fucking buy a heart and just like drag it in here and i have one i can just have a heart and i can have a scotty i can have you know, an another Scotty? If you say so. If you say so. And then I can have a Swift Blink. Yes. And then I can have a Hex. Yes. Scythe of Vice. What if I have, yeah, what if I have Rapier here? Does that, does that work? Any item. You said any item, Val. Any item. Any item. Your words, Gaben. Your, your words. Got dirt between my toes. Any item. They fucking lied. They fucking right. lied, chat. They, they they lied to us. They lied to us again. Uh -huh. Fucking bastards. Alright, so, so so not any item. What if I put a death soul there? Uh -huh. Hey, why not? But we don't get them yep, yep. on our clone. They don't get the neutral item as One well. In front of the other. <laughs> you just have a swift just blink here. Little... This looks so weird, dude. Oh my god. I, okay, this is... A, I mean, this is definitely interesting. This is... I, I'm an old Meepo picker, you know? Like, this, this is definitely kind of... Uh, kind of making me think, man. This is, this is definitely interesting. Gem? Can we put gem there? We cannot put gem there. Like your style. We cannot take the gem and put it there. Does not want to. What about dust? I can have dust always. I mean... May not seem like the biggest thing ever, but honestly, for Meepo, it kind of is, you know? And even if we couldn't have it there, we could just have it... We could even have it like this, you know? It doesn't matter how we do it. We just have one more... One more slot. Hmm. I mean, six slotted Meepo now, or seven slotted Meepo can be pretty fucking strong. Like, look at these stats. Just, just as a random... Random fucking stat build here. Not even the strongest necessarily, but look so. at our HP. And when I blink, look at our Agi. Like this is this is actually pretty strong. The tower into yep, yep. Yeah, items that would have been dropped when right. dead you can't put there. You can have Aegis there. Yeah, I mean, even if you couldn't have Aegis there, you could have Aegis here, and then you can have an item there. So yeah, you can be you can be Aegis. I mean, for all intents and purposes, just imagine being seventh, uh, seventh inventory slotted. Interesting. Well, that definitely is big. Meepo does gear cap pretty easily as well, and uh, getting to level twenty five as well. Um, interesting. 
All right, let's keep going. Marana, the Agi is decreased from 3.4 to 3.1. The Star Storm secondary search radius is increased to 650. Wow, huge range on it now. Um, that's a big buff. The speed duration increased from 2.5 to 4 seconds. The shard wave end radius is increased by a lot and the shard wave projectile speed is increased to 1800. I still don't know about this shard, man. I'm not sure about that shard. Um, the leap distance increase talent as well feels weird, not gonna lie. Mana break is replaced with 35 damage, so you can't have mana break anymore. You do have damage, but the shard, the mana break was good. Yeah, the, the shard is very underwhelming now. Mirana has had a lot of shards, but this is the most underwhelming one, I think. Bound strike, rework the shard. Can we put an auto cast to quickly leap to the opposing end of the staff as it hits the ground? What the fuck? Okay, we have to see that too. Chat, we have to see it. We gotta see it. We, we wanna see some real fucking Wukong here. That sounds hilarious. That sounds dope as fuck. I hope it has some good rubbery animation. And then we, then we put it on quick cast. Okay. I mean, it looks very smooth, actually. This jumpy fucker, dude. Here I come. <laughs> no. No. Ready for yeah, I mean, you very quickly can attack. Let's say, let's say we jump someone here. As a valid question, how fast can we attack if we do this? We can attack them with no items in level 30. It seems we get like two attacks out before they even um, before they even react. Like let's see here. Yeah, we pretty much get two attacks out before they're unstunned, and that's with no items at all. So I mean, if we're if we're hitting late late game with any form of item builds, whoops, that was out of range. Got it. See how fast you can ulti? Yeah, jump in and ulti. It's not super fast, but fast enough. They're gonna just barely start walking, and the ulti is gonna be downed. It's pretty good, yeah. Name's Meepo, Geomancer. Pleased to meet you. That's pretty cool. Um, okay, no and then the tree dance vision range is replaced with the zero point two seconds mischief damage immunity increase. Wow. Okay. Seems pretty good. Seems very good. Seems very very good. Um, attribute shift agility gain rework to shard now causes attribute shift to work while stunned and increases the bonus agility by 6. Stat shift per second rescaled from 3 to 24 to 5 to 20. Mana cost per second is rescaled from 10 to 5 to 20. Okay. Fair enough. So he's always paying the same amount of mana per stat shifted. Okay. And uh, rework to shard, same thing there. So he has a shard. I mean, this sounds... This sounds stupid strong though. He has a shard that makes it so he can morph even when he's stunned. Uh, morph scepter stolen status resistance is increased from 35 to 40%. The attack speed from 50% to 70%. And the spell amp from 20 to 25%. The strength is replaced with the plus one second adaptive strike stun. And attribute shift works while stunned is replaced with 35 strength. I mean, he, he straight up gets a level 25 talent as a shard but not only that he also gets more stats so he gets six strength and six agi and morph while stunned for 1400 gold i mean for 1400 golds shifting is slower it, it is slower by four per second. That's not massively slower though. But mana cost is the big thing. This is the big thing. Like mana cost is gonna go instead of 10 
mana per 24 morph. It's going to be 20 mana per 20 morph. And that's the big thing. He can't do it all the time. So forcing him to use morph is big. And chat, if he runs out of mana, you know what he can't do? Press that stupid fucking BKB. Because he's going to get cucked. So at least there's some form of balance. But yeah, good thing AA is buffed is all I'm going to say. Good, good thing AA is buffed. Uh, let's see what we have here. Ensnare cooldown is decreased to 12 seconds. Scepter no longer decreases the ensnare cooldown, but still allows the uh, target uh, to target spell immune and sleeping units. Scepter now increases projected speed by 50%. Wait, so yep. What? This is so much worse now. What? So base ensnare is better than before, but scepters is so much worse now. Why would I pay for that? <clears throat> All I'm getting is... Okay. So the old scepter brought the cooldown from... 14 seconds to 8 seconds, I think, right? Or some shit like that? What was it, 9? I think it was 8 or 9 second cooldown. Read below? Rework the scepter? Oh, so they, they added it here too. Oh, you get a new ability. Okay, okay, okay. Shard no longer slows enemies hit, sure. Rework the scepter that grants a new ability, reel in. Nagasiren chants up to five seconds, pulling all units affected by Ensnare in a 1400 range towards her at a speed of 150. <laughs> this is again, like how Slack's written this, but all units affected by ensnare and then ensnare cooldown and then but what how are you gonna hit multiple people am i missing something here how am i hitting multiple enemy hero like what what do you mean all units refresher <laughs> what It also seems to pull very slowly, no? That sounds like it's extremely slow. Oh, it doesn't pull across hills, by the way. Aghanim Scepter, by the way, cannot cannot pull him off a hill. Yeah, so yeah, if, if there's a little bit of terrain in the way, then never mind that, chat. Here's my Aghanim Scepter, it's great. Oh, he, he's stuck, I can't pull him over here. Never mind, there's a straight fucking line over here. There's apparently a rock on his shoe or something, so he cannot move. Because we can't pull. Yes. Okay. So if I do this. And pull him this no way then. Slithery. Wow, look at that chat. Holy fuck. Great. And it doesn't even automatically stop when there's nothing to pull either. Because what is this shit? He can still just do this. <laughs> he can just do that. Like, he's not even stunned, chat. What the fuck is this? I mean, I suppose that, yeah, if you're, like, support and you're ensnaring from far away, you can, like, do this and they can't, you know, easily stop it. But 4,200 gold for this? Yes, apparently. Do you know how good the old shard was compared to this? I mean, to be fair, pulling someone... I mean, it's sort of nice. Imagine you have your illusions out there fighting and stuff. You can dis... You can definitely dislocate someone hard in the fights. This is like a support Naga thing. But 4,200 gold for this? Seems pretty bad. Cannot be dispelled. Yeah. Can't be dispelled. That's true. Can't you? It is, however, a channeling spell, no, so you can just so silence or stun the Naga. Slither. Does it pull through Bikibi? It better. 
Let's see here. You can still affect him. Yeah, it pulls through BKB, assuming that you ensnare them after BKB. But they can BKB to dispel the ensnare, so... You know, if they do this, then you can't pull them. It's for positioning during ulti. That's true. You can do this. Like, sleep them and then be like, yo, you come here. And then you put them in the bad spots. And then you fight. I don't know. Yeah, you, you can definitely set up some big ultis with it. You, like set the, i don't know i mean maybe maybe it's better than i give it credit for but it seems so shit dude the old agonims was really good the new agonims uh maybe, maybe it's better than i give it credit for like you do have the ensnare cooldown talent on level 10 now and then you have the uh, song of the siren radius wow okay we keep going we keep going what do we have curse of the older Old growth rework the shard grants a new ability. Curse of the old growth applies a curse in, on all non invisible enemy heroes in 1200 range, revealing them in fog of war, slowing them and causing damage over time based on how many trees are within 250 radius. Trees count as trees for this purpose. Each tree reduced movement speed, reduces movement speed by 7%. And deals 15 damage per second, duration 6 seconds, cooldown 20 seconds, mana cost 80. So basically, if you're in the trees, you just kind of get fucked. Cooldown 20, duration 6? What? That seems very good. And 15 damage per tree per second? This thing is broken, no? Isn't this just broken? This seems just broken. Yeah... This seems broken. I mean, he had a good shard before, but this seems broken. This seems really, really, really strong. No, I'm not gonna test it. We have so much more to read. Uh, seems really broken. Reaper Scythe, uh, minus 10 seconds on the cooldown. Mana cost from 200 to 500, 250 to 500. Um, 8 strength is changed with 2 Heartstoppers Aura stack duration. Um, sure. And... Magic resistance is replaced with Ghost Shroud self restoration amplification. Sure. Scepter stun is up by 200 milliseconds. The fear is down by one second. That's a good thing. And 109 movement speed is replaced with 109 status resistance. That's pretty strong. So buff, buff, nerf. Okay. I mean, nerf to fear. I agree. Cast range is increased on the Vendetta and or on Impale, I mean. Vendetta is cooldown reduced a little bit. And Spectacarus Reflect Duration. Wow, that's a good one. Base health region is decreased to 0 0.25. Base armor is down. Base damage is increased by 20. I'm going mid. I'm going mid. I go mid. Ogre lane butchered? What do you mean butchered? 20 damage, dude. Do you understand? Oh, what do you mean butchered? You just bloodlust. If you're a side laner, bloodlust yourself and run at the enemy. Trust, you're gonna win the trade. Yeah, you have you have no regen and you have less armor, sure. But if you have 20 more damage, you can just bloodlust yourself. It's a lot of damage. And for mid lane, he can just power deny. Yeah, this is strong. Now this is first tick of damage after 0 0.1 second, one tick less total. Okay, nice. <clears throat> nice, a little bit of nerf. And that dispels both Omni Knight and his target when cast. Oof. Mana cost is decreased from 50 to 80 to 40 to 55. Bonus base damage increased from 55 to 100, 60 to 120. Okay. And Guardian Angel is shorter duration and then heavenly grace strength and health region per debuff from four to three i mean dispelling both is pretty big buff in itself and hammer is better um mana cost is decreased on purifying flames the oracle ulti has less cooldown the reign of destiny heal per second is increased the agonim scepter that is fortress and Plus duration, sure, 10 armor. Ooh, what? 10 armor false promise on level 10 talent? Yo, 
plus 15 armor false promise talent is replaced with 80 fortress this is a very strong talent to get early i mean yeah it's less armor than 15 but it seems good replace the mana with imprison astro imprisonment cast range it's spell amp 60 second sanity's eclipse cooldown oh jesus oh he's, he's gonna be like sf now just ulting all the time what the fuck scary um mana cost is decreased on the swash buckle shield crash duration is decreased from 5 to 11 to 5 incoming damage reduction per hero from 15 to 18 to 20. this duration decrease is huge though proc chance is decreased as well and i can also proc on any instance of damage dealt by pangler's abilities oh so lucky shot will proc a lot if you run over with car if you if you press your w i mean that's mainly it i guess but yeah um mana region replaced with three lucky shot armor reduction and then shield crash damage reduction per hero instead of strength and rolling thunder cooldown is decreased from 25. Uh, this seems like a huge nerf though this one line here seems like a giga nerf. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, some of this is nice, but I think this here guts him. Shield Crash was very strong, but like six seconds less on Shield Crash damage reduction. If you got a big W, you could just be there. Now, I mean, it doesn't do that much, really. Um... Let's see, Phantom Strike now grants lifesteal for its duration. Just passively? Wow, built-in sustainability while jungling. And of course, while fighting, it's nice too. 15% uh, lifesteal is replaced with Blur Evasion on level 15 talent. That's so early, dude. That's so early. My MKB cannot come that early. Blur is replaced with 60 Phantom Strike attack speed. It was 35. I know it was 35. It's less now, but it's also early, dude. Level 15 is so early. She can go BKB early on, and then what do you do? You can't right-click her. You can't kill her with spells. PA seems very, very, very good now, especially with this lifesteal built in as well. Um, base health regions increased on the PL. He has more spirit dance damage. Fair enough. Health region increase on the Phoenix. Fire Spirit's damage per second is again up. Sure. And then Lord on the talent. Sure. Beast. Oh, he gets Aghanims. Uh Base health region is increased by 0 0.25. Wow. Added Scepter. Uproar releases three waves of two projectiles per stack, which split into two after a 1.25 second delay. Oh my god, it's literally the fucking uh, splitter thing. Each projectile deals 100 damage, not 6,000. Uh, two enemies and applies break on them for 2.5 seconds. Uh, now can be used while channeling spells. Okay. Interesting. So you can like ulti and do this at the same time. Um, rock throw now splits in three additional smaller fragments. 600 units behind it. Yep. Okay. Sure. Literally just la Axe Labyrinth. Um, I mean, it was a pretty shitty shard. Not gonna lie. Is this good? Three waves of two projectiles. We, we gotta try it in the game. I, I don't think I get away from trying this one, huh? We gotta give him the business. I know for a fact that no one in my MMR can dodge it. <laughs> yep, true, true. All right, so we, we gotta, ah, but it's conditional though. You have to get hit first, right? If you don't get hit, then you don't get your stacks. Three waves, two projectiles per stack, split into two, 1.5 seconds. Seems... Seems kind of underwhelming, not gonna lie. This 
the break is big. I mean, yeah, it's a source of break, which I suppose is good, but it's a 4,200 gold source of break. You can always get charges from Roche, though. Sure, but you can't always rely on Roche. Um, then mana region is onslaught damage. That seems like a big buff. The magic resistance during trample instead of overall magic resistance seems bad. Uh, onslaught damage replaced with beast dispels himself when activating uproar. So he has a self dispel available and uproar uh, per stack is changed with trample cooldown. Dispels himself when activating uproar is replaced with the plus four armor per uproar. And spell lifesteal is replaced with pulverized pierces magic immunity. Piercing magic immunity, grab and smash. Okay, that's the big buff though. That's the big buff. Piercing magic immunity with your ulti. And he still has the other one too, right? So you just want to get, yeah. He has the duration and the magic immunity. If he gets level 30, you're in trouble now. If the beast gets level 30, you're in trouble. Ma pierces magic immunity, not spell immunity. So? What do you mean? What do you mean pierces magic immunity, not spell immunity? You mean that it's going to pierce magic resistance or what? That's the same, dude. Like, that's just Dota wording. Magic immunity, spell immunity, that's just the same. It's not, it's not about that. It's gonna be about whether or not we can click it when the enemy has beak beyond. Which we can. And the damage goes through because, you know, it does. It, it's, by the way, pure damage anyway. Yeah. Yeah, if you get grabbed by this, you're just getting fucking pounded, dude. The damage is not relevant. Oh, the damage will be relevant when you get to the maxed out. When you get maxed out. Yeah, screen capture is a bit zoomed because I'm literally just on a screen capture right now. I'm not on the... Uh, uh, I'm not on uh, full settings, but never mind. Uh, yeah, okay, seems strong. The loser orb is changed with illusory damage. Waning Rift uh, damage talent is nerfed as well. The Waning Rift Kuldvun uh, uh, reduction is decreased by from six to four. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, that means that you're, you're just not nearly as strong. Coil Thunderation is replaced with damage on the initial and break. Yep, Puck is just very 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 nerfed which is fair because he's extremely high priority in high level games right now but uh puck is nowhere near as strong as he was before uh scepter bonus radius is decreased on pudge mana cost is increased on the flesh heap and flesh heap is worse at level 25 talent um Ward no longer gives spell damage reduction. Base damage is increased from 50 to uh, 80 on Netherward. Reworked Scepter. Oh, this could be fun. Reduces the cooldown by 50%. When targeting an enemy hero, Pugna reduces their outgoing spell damage by 8% per second up to a maximum of 75% and increases his own up to a maximum of 100%. When used on a nether ward, the rate is 4%, the debuff lasts for 8 seconds. Oh, so he puts a debuff on them that reduces their spell amp, and that stays for 8 seconds. Oh, yeah, don't, don't let that little spooky boy suck on you. Uh, yeah, it's not gonna be good for you. Okay, that's pretty, pretty good. Pretty good, not gonna lie. Much better than his old scepter anyway. So yeah, that's pretty pog. Queen scepter, reworked scepter, shadow strike, initial damage is increased by 80 and is applied to all enemies in a 375 radius around the target. When shadow strike ends or is reapplied to an enemy hero, the target emits a screen, it's Ag's Labyrinth. They, they just took all their ideas from Aghanim's Labyrinth. Like, here we go, these, these spells. <laughs> the, okay, sure. The target emits a scream of pain, hitting nearby enemies, doesn't trigger on illusion 
or on death. In Aghanim's Labyrinth, it did trigger on death, which was really broken. It does not trigger then, but when it ends or is reapplied and you can reapply it by just casting your AOE Shadow Strike again and then you have changes to Shadow Strike instances is replaced with 0. Uh, 0. 0.7 Shadow Strike damage interval mm -hmm. so higher DPS and Shadow Strike AOE is replaced with minus 60 Sonic Wave cooldown on level 20 okay and then Spell Block is replaced with Sonic Wave damage so no more Lincoln's Talent for Queen Okay, but the Sonic Wave though, you can get your ulti to be really strong with very little investment here. I mean, yeah, you you say that you lose your Lincolns, right? But the Shadow Strike uh, AOE you get with the Agonims, I don't know. It, it seems kind of cool. It seems kind of cool, and uh, I, I think this could still be still be very very strong. Base movement speed is decreased on Racer. Buff duration is decreased as well from the uh, Static Link, at least on low level. So six seconds less on Static Link on low level. Can now be cast on, on a target that already has Static Link debuff. Ability still cannot be cast on an enemy currently linked by Racer. Mm -hmm. Fair enough. Rework the shard now always hits up to three valid targets, even if the caster or attacker of the incoming spell is magic immune. Casts, uh, cast and attack have consistent targeting rules, only visible enemies. Uh, the attack speed is uh, replaced with creates a second plasma field delayed by 0 0.8 seconds. Ooh, scary, scary damage. Uh, two static link charges is replaced with static link steals attack speed. Oh no. Oh no, dude. Oh no, that that's scary. Yeah, so you don't take the attack speed's talent, you just take the one that steals attack speed from the enemy. Oh no, dude, he can really destroy heroes now. The anti-carry has evolved. Bonus damage is uh, decreased on blink strike. Agility damage multiplier is now doubled against creeps. Straight up, just now you can farm. There you go. You can now farm, Ricky. Farm. Go. Go, Ricky. Get, take the creeps. That's insane. I mean, they did something similar to like Spirit Breaker and Slardar and so on. But those heroes didn't hit on every single attack. They have like a percentage-based thing. Now, Agi damage multiplier is doubled against creeps. Doubled means it takes... Um, double is when you take 100% and make it 200%. When you take one and make it two. So if you were doing 100 backstab damage, you're now doing 200 backstab damage. You have to attack from behind though. Yeah, you still have to attack from behind. Next patch is going to be uh, backstab now also works as front stab. But you still can't hit more than uh, one to jungle creeps. Yes, you can. You can use your blink strike. Every blink strike is a guaranteed backstab. So you can go up to a jungle camp. You can hit it in the back with your first auto attack. And then you can blink strike. That's going to be another backstab. You can blink strike again. That's going to be another backstab. You can use your tricks of your trade, which is also guaranteed backstabs. So you're going to get like, what, six guaranteed backstabs if you're doing that? Um, yeah. So uh, definitely not true that you can only do one on neutrals. You can do better, a lot better than that. Blink Strike Slow Talent is increased from 0 0.3 to 0 0.4. Smoke Screen Radius is decreased. Rubik gets some base armor. Uh, mana costs is decreased on Telekinesis. Jump reduction is decreased as well. Nothing major to say about that. Cast range is increased on Sanking Stone. A lot better on level one. Um, Better chance to kill. Caustic Finale slow replaced with Burst Strike stun duration. Sand King could be interesting after this. Oh yeah, people are going to play more Sand King, I think. And Sandstorm uh, damage per second increased. Yeah, whatever. Replaced Soul Catcher with Disseminate. Disseminate. Whenever the target takes damage, all enemies, including the target itself, if it is an enemy, within 600 range of the target also receive 20 to 35 percent of that damage all enemies including the target itself whenever the target takes damage okay 
sure. Can target enemy and allied units. Effects effect is paused if the enemy is hidden by disruption. Duration six seconds, cooldown eighteen seconds, mana cost hundred. That seems good. Yeah, it's like fatal bond sort of. Whenever a target takes damage, all enemies, including the target itself, if it is within six hundred. Yeah, sort of, sort of like fatal bond. See. But you can have fatal bonds with it, you know. Go ham. And 10% more share damage. Hmm. Yeah, he's like warlock number two. Thank you so much, uh, Ready on Song. Thank you for the Prime Sub. We have two more base damage on Shadow Fiend. Shadow Race debuff now also applies a stackable 30% turn speed slow and 15% slow speed slow per consecutive. Yeah, sure, why not? You try laning against mid Shadow Fiend with Mangles, you fuck. What do you mean it now gives me no turn speed and movement? Is he the new Batrider? Why? I guess this is just Ice Frog is really tired of people not skilling Shadow Race. So he's like, here, please skill Shadow Race. But what the fuck, dude? That's so strong. Uh, Scepter now additionally reduces the cooldown by 30 seconds? Okay, so that he has to go and rid of that one then. 50 seconds cooldown is replaced with Shadow Race applies attack damage. Oh Jesus, they really want people to skill the Shadow Race. Shadow Race applies attack damage. So it's Slider Fist now as well. Oh my god, that actually is really strong too. Oh my god, dudes. Oh uh, shit, man. Yeah, okay, that, that's, yeah, SF got some giga buffs, man. Base damage, already helping his laning. Shadow Race buff, insanely helping his laning stage. And then late game being mega buffed as well. Wow. Okay, SF is on. Base damage is decreased on Rasta quite massively. Okay, cast range is increased on his shackles though. And the shard bonus cast range is decreased to match. Okay, whatever. The turn rate increase on the Serpent Wards. They can spin faster. Hell yeah. Uh, base attack speed is increased is decreased by 15. Base attack time is improved though. So that's going to make him better overall. Silence damage multiplier decreased from 1.7 to 1.5. Penalty duration increased per cast decreased from 3 to 2. Okay. Rework to shard now causes every fourth glaive to... Attack to silence an enemy for 1.75 seconds. Additionally increases the int stolen uh, on attack and on kill by 2. Okay. Int multiplier uh, decreased. Multiplier now works on units that don't have int. Treating them as having 0. Ooh. Dude, the Aghanim Scepter just got so much better. Aghanim Scepter can actually farm creeps now. It treats the creeps as having zero int, meaning you're gonna one-shot the creeps with your fucking E quite easily. If you have um, sufficient int, you just need to have over 100 int, basically. Because you're gonna be very, very effective at killing them then. Yeah, that's easy. Dude, Ags, Ags is gonna farm so quickly. Insanely fast. Okay, yeah. Aghanim's massively buffed. Shard... Also quite buffed, because... I don't know, or is it? I guess it's reworked, so it doesn't bounce anymore? Hmm. I mean, the bounce was kind of nice, but this is this is stronger. This is a lot of silence. And what else do we have? Uh, we have the attack range is replaced with silence cooldown. Curse slow is changed with last word int multiplier. Global silence glaives wisdom damage. And level 20 talent, last word multiplier is Arcane Curse Undispellable on 20. And then you have plus two Glaives of Wisdom bounces on 25. So come late game against Mega Creeps, you can have uh, some Glaive bounces as well still. Hmm. Silence are pretty buffed. Silence are pretty buffed, not gonna lie. Yeah, I mean, yeah, the, the level level 1500 attack range was nice, but still, there's a lot of good stuff going for him. A lot of good stuff going for him. Not to say the least, base attack time. That's a big, 
big buff. Uh, mana cost increase, sure. Rework to shard every time the Skyrath uh, Mage deals magic damage to an enemy hero with his abilities. He gains a buff against 2 bonus intelligence and 0 0.5 uh, bonus armor. Each cast stacks independently. Each time he deals magic damage to an enemy hero with his abilities, he grants he gains a buff that grants bonus intelligence and 0 0.5 armor. Each cast stacks independently. It doesn't even say the duration though, but each time. Yeah, so the ulti, 22 stacks with the ulti? Oh, <laughs> oh, I see. I see, okay, so the ulti can give you a lot, huh? But it's gonna be much worse for farming or moving across the map and casting stuff. This is good when you're fighting, but really bad outside of that. Because it's only on heroes. Like the previous one, you pretty much kept your mana going just by spamming spells. Your mana didn't really go down even, but now you can't do that anymore. It's good for fighting, but not outside of that. Um, Guardian Sprint now passively grants uh, 8 HP regen and 4 armor while in water. Scepter bonus, uh, armor bonus increase from 10 to 11. Okay, so <laughs> casually just gets that. Slytherin mana crush, 100 mana... Or mana cost uh, to 100. Okay, it's a 250 radius puddle of water. Lasts for 6 seconds. Scepter still makes it bigger. Yeah, but here's the thing. You removed Ocean Heart. You removed Ocean Heart. Like, Slardar is not a hero because you removed Ocean Heart. I don't need to read about Slardar because there's, there's no Ocean Heart. Fuck the puddle. Yeah, sure. Add that you can now make a puddle on your own. But there's no Ocean Heart. Don't trick me, game. You already took it away. Uh, the movement speed and attack slow, sure, and crush stun duration. I mean, that's nice. More stun duration is very good. Um, but again, no Ocean Heart. Yeah, we, we have a little bit of built in, but we don't have built in mana region chat. Ocean Heart mana region. But yeah, I mean, at least he got something, I guess. Agi gain is decreased on Slark. His base attack time or base attack speed is increased. No longer deals direct damage, now applies Essence Shift when you pounce people. Mm-hmm. Three stacks. Okay. Shadow Dance, uh, health region per second is rescaled from 567 max health to 60, 90, or 120 health. Hmm. Per second. Interesting. Interesting, interesting. Very strong on early levels, no? Perhaps. But I guess a lot, yeah, it's going to be a lot weaker in late game. A lot weaker in late game. Much, much weaker in late game. Um, Shoutdowns region per second replaced with 40. Shoutdowns region per second, okay. Rework to shard. Fire snap cookie increases hop range by 175 and launches Mortimer Kisses glob along the with the targeted unit. Oh. Damn, that's a spicy cookie. Projectile speed is increased by 100. Stun duration is increased by 400 milliseconds. Okay. Fire snap cookie duration, scatter last damage. Fire snap cookie cooldown. And kisses damage. Pretty good. Concussive grenade can no longer, cannot be used while rooted or leashed. Told you this shard is OP. I've been saying it for a long time. It's fucking OP, man. This fucking shard was so fucking strong, dude. People weren't even buying it. I played against people who had like 40,000 net worth, never bought the shard on Sniper. I don't know what the fuck they were thinking. Yeah, they nerfed it. Fair enough. Uh, headshot damage instead. Yeah, I mean, that's stronger during take aim, but weaker outside of that. Uh, let's int for Spectre. Damage decrease. Mm -hmm. Okay. Applies an instance. Uh, desolate to targets with no units within 400 radius of them. Okay. Interesting. But the damage is decreased though. Some mana region for Spirit Breakers. Stun duration is increased from 1.2 uh, to 2.4. 1.5 to 2.4. Planar, planar Pocket. Rework to Shard. Grants a new ability. Planar Pocket. Bathroom distorts the fabric of space. Increasing his own magic resistance by 25%. And redirecting the first enemy spell targeted at an allied hero within 900 radius of him. Magic 
resistance is removed after the re redirected spell has hit. Duration six seconds, cooldown 20. He redirects it, what, to him? So he gets magic resistance and then he takes it? You tested the Spirit Breaker Shard and he can't redirect a spell that is cast before he uses the Shard ability. The Shard spell redirected ability is also triggered if an enemy hero fake casts on the target, allowing them to cast on the target the second time. <laughs> you can buy a Lotus and force it to target you. Yeah, so you like Lotus Orb yourself and then you Planar Pocket. But yeah, if you can cancel animation and trigger it still, then that sounds like an easy way to counter it. It probably shouldn't work like that. Agi gain is up on Mr. Storm. Shard no longer grants allied heroes benefit of the attack balance talent. Yeah. <clears throat> the ball lightning spawns remnant every 550 units improved to 500, sure. Sven, now Scepter adds an autocast if it's enabled. Sven does not travel with the storm hammer. Seems like a better way to do it than having to backpack it, sure. Warcry duration increased by one second. Mana cost decreased as well. And cooldown, ooh, cooldown on God Strength though, 110 to 95. Quite a bit better. And the Warcry uptime, I don't know, not massive changes to Sven, but relevant changes, I guess. Um, stick bomb slows more. Reactive taster now applies a basic dispel to the attacking enemy. Scepter now also deals damage to any enemy that attacks the affected ally. Hmm. Okay. Uh, minefield sign less cooldown, less duration, less cast time, or has cast time, and causes mines within 500 radius to be invulnerable. Hmm. Okay. Interesting. So you cannot attack them. You have to go in and, and uh, trigger them. TA changes. Uh oh, always nervous. What do we have? Mana cost decreased from 100 to 85 to 100. Sure. Okay. Nice. <clears throat> nice. We like that so far. The attack speed is changed with 25 refraction damage. Well, we did lose damage recently in the recent patch. And the evasion talent is also replaced, same as life stealers, where the refraction can be cast while disabled. <laughs> yes, yes, I can have fun with that. Hmm, mm, mm. hmm, refracting while disabled, you say? Doesn't matter if they stun me, you say? Cast it whenever I want, you say? Hmm, two can play that game, crayon. You and your silly morphling. I can now refract while you on me. <laughs> Isn't that lovely? Can you cast it when I get silenced? No, because I'm silenced. Uh, remember to test if you can cast refraction in void ulti. I should be able to cast refraction in void, void ulti. Void ulti does not silence me. However, dual silences, for instance. So. You want to be careful about dual. Um, turn rates improved from 0 0.6 to 0 0.8. Base health region is increased. Sunder mana cost is decreased as well. Fair, fair. Um, reflection duration replaced with, okay. Reflection cooldown, sure, sure, sure. Um, damage block is increased to 70. Rework to shard grants a new ability. Tentacles of the Deep releases a wave of tentacles in the targeted direction. The tentacles deal 50% of ravage damage and stun and travel 75% uh, of ravage radius. Cooldown 20 seconds, mana cost 80. So, impale? Or am I wrong? Like... It's a targeted ravage, like uh, this is impale, no? <laughs> Aren't we just talking about impale? It's wider and slower, I think. Uh, we need to see it. I mean, it's very low cooldown, 
Uh, this one I have to test. It's very low cooldown. It seems good. Oh, we, we probably need to have our ulti skills, because otherwise he just does this. Yeah, it's it's slower. A lot slower. The tide moves. By the moon. It's also not very long duration. Like, Ravage would be 2.8 seconds duration right now. This is not 2.8. It's 50% of Ravage damage and stun. So yeah, it's a 1.4 second. Yeah. I mean, you could take the stun talent and then it's going to be more. It's pretty good when you have that. I don't know. It's just a kind of shitty impale. But I mean, I would take a shitty impale. That's a good spell to get for free. Yeah, it's a scuffed lion stun, but who doesn't want that? It's just a TP canceler. You spit on people and you do other shit. I don't know. I kind of liked the old Tidebringer or Tidebringer Tidehunter shard, though. I kind of liked that, so yeah. Let's see. Kraken Shell Threshold replaced with Anchor Smash damage. Anchor Smash reduction is increased. Kraken Shell damage block is better and Anchor Smash affects buildings. Okay, it's still it's still there in a way, in a talent. Okay. Or in two talents, basically. Timber gets more strength. Max hero uh, max stacks is increased to 40? What is this shit? Heroes attacking grant two stacks and uh, bonus health per stack is decreased from 0 0.7 to 1.3 to 0 0.4 to 0 0.7. Sure. Bulls armor per stack is decreased from 0 0.9 to 1.2 to 0 0.5 to 0 0.8. 0 0.8 armor per stack and we have max stacks of 40? Seems, seems like a lot. Yeah, it takes longer to build up though. Max armor is rescaled, yeah. I mean, oh, overall nerf to Timbersaw, right? Like all of this, definitely overall nerf. Chakram mana cost is decreased though. And mana cost decreased. Ah, ah, well, why is it decreased twice? Seems good. It's very decreased, I guess. It's decreased three fucking times, dude. They just copy paste this shit. Should I just put this in my stream title as well? Is it like copy paste it, otherwise? One of your family members could get chakram. Mana cost per second decreased. What the fuck? Yeah. I, I guess the the copy paste the wrong thing. It was gonna be like the mana cost per second or something. No, I didn't click. I swear I didn't click. Ah. Uh. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. We still have ways to go, man. Okay, mana cost uh, decreased on the laser, sure. Challenge time is decreased on Tinker's rearm, so he's faster. Mana cost is also decreased on it, now has a cooldown. Uh, what? Rearm has a cooldown? Which is also reset with rearm. If rearm is interrupted, it goes on cool. If it's interrupted, mm, I like that. So he has to continue it. That's good. That's good. That's good, chat. That's very good. Uh, and spell amp is changed with the defense matrix cooldown reduction. Okay, fair enough. Mm, mana cost is increased on the toss. Cast range is reduced as well. No longer reduces attack speed by a flat value. Now reduces the attack speed by 30%. This affects all item and spell bonuses as well. This reduction does not scale with level of grow. Bonus damage uh, increase from 30 to 70 to 110 to 50 to 100, 150. Okay, okay. It seems like Tiny's laning stage will be a little bit worse, but it will be better later on, I guess. Ish. Ish, ish. Uh, tree endless Agi. Tooltip change to display the heal per second instead of total heal. Provides 6 health per second. Bonus armor. 
yeah uh, i mean more armor i guess early on nature's guys speed is down living armor heal replaced with health per second sure overgrowth undispellable that's a big talent level 25 undiddly un undiddly spellable undiddly little spellable tree and ulti with the refresher could be very scary and snare now pierces spell immunity oh yeah that's a big fucking buff jesus that's terrifying uh rage armor replaced with two seconds whirling access uh, debuff duration sure 30 damage replaced with 10 berserkers armor trans cooldown bell trans movement speed fair enough fair enough sounds terrifying don't come near me troll Region changes, stun duration is up a little bit, quite a bit actually. And Walrus Kick is now blocked by Linkus Sphere. Yay! Finally! It was a little bit OP. Firestorm, uh, max health uh, max health burn damage is rescaled to 40% per tick. Wait, no, that was a previous patch. Uh, it's rescaled to 3%. Cooldown is 12 seconds, 15 to 12 seconds. Fiendskate cooldown 140, 100, 120, 100. Sure, more Fiendskating around. Incoming damage reduction is even higher. Undying, anything happen here? He got weaker. Debuff or buff no longer modifies your health when expiring. Enemies no longer gain health and Undying doesn't lose health on expiration. That's a big buff. Cast point improved on decay and damage is rescaled no damage and then slightly higher damage so ripped cast point is also improved and mana cost on tombstone is increased cast point is increased decay is better tombstone zombie damage worse and decay cooldown reduction is stronger i mean this is a huge buff the decay change is a huge buff to uh, undying because that really fucked him over mana cost up by 10 for ursa uh, Aftershock applies two stacks of Fury Swipes. Oh, that is much better than the 10 Agi. Definitely. For farming jungle, it's really nice. And even for just going on someone, it's not bad. Or more quickly, getting Roshan up to high stacks. I mean, yeah, this seems, seems great. Um, status resistance instead of the health. And then... You have after the earth shock cooldown coming in here. Casting in rage provides half the benefits to allies in 700 radius. Whoa, that's a huge radius. That's a huge radius. Oh my God, dude. Yeah, okay, Ursa is gonna be scary. Cast range is increased on the magic missile. Shard no longer provides bonus magic missile cast range. Shard bounce range now mirrors the current cast range. Wave terror is higher damage. Swap enemy hero damage. Nice, no blinking. Uh, Agi is changed to magic missile cast range and magic missile cooldown reduction is slightly worse. Oh, we see a new shard. Mana cost change, blah, blah, blah. Rework to shard grants new ability, latent toxicity. Much like uh, the average Dota player. Applies a weak poison that slows by 10% and deals 20 damage per second to its target for 7 seconds. If this poison is dispelled in any way, the target will receive 300 damage and be stunned for 2 seconds. 75 mana cost. Cooldown 20 seconds, range 600, cast point save for 2, protect cast build 1200. So only if it's dispelled do they take the stun. So Venno has a stun, but it's conditional on them being dispelled. I guess expiration counts as dispel? If it's dispelled in any way, am I... It works with BKB? It stuns BKBs, huh? Oh, it goes through BKB? Huh. This is why the Yules change? Uh, I understand. So Yules, Yules does dispel first. And then you're in the air. Oh, so you can't even use yourself then. 
Because it first dispels. Do you still go in the air? I need to see this. So Veno, Veno uh, is the reason why Yules was changed. I was wondering what the Yules thing was about. So if we have a Yules boy here and we buy Shard. Let's level this guy and we spit. Okay, so it's just the targeted thing. Wait, so he's fine? So you can, you can Yules yourself. Agitation. Takes damage though. Now he has it on him. He's still... It says he's stunned while he's in the air. Yeah, so he can, he can Yules himself. But does this thing even stun if it expires? Is it just if it dispels, but not if... I feel like he probably should get stunned and not go in the air? I don't think this is working the way that I thought that it would. I thought that this would be like Yules doesn't work because you dispel yourself first and then you don't get in the air. What if you Beekeby? If you Beekeby, I guess you get stunned. Yeah. I mean, I guess that's the nice thing. It's supposed to like counter all the stuff that counters Venomancer. It's like the counter to the counter kind of. So you like go on someone and they wanna, they wanna Manta style off or whatever. They use Manta, he gets stunned. Yeah. Yes. Or if they buy a Lotus, you know, the, the typical Venomancer counter items are getting countered by this thing. Cause you do this, you just get stunned. So it's kind of nice With for Veno. But I guess Yules, you can still uh, get away with. Get stunned by during the Yules, you can see the debuff. Yeah, I know I saw that, but like I said, that's not how I expected it to work. Like, I don't feel like it's made a lot of difference, but I felt like Yules already did dispel near immediately, but now it's like Yules is before the Yules effect. I feel like Yules already did dispel while you were in the air, not at the end of Yules. I don't know. It, it seems strange. Uh, could you move the uh, Wind Wake Yules? You can probably not move. No, I'm not going to test it, but you can try it for yourself. Um, poisoning health reduction. Venomous Gale cooldown reduction is decreased. Lifesteal is replaced with cooldown. Gale Plague Wards. Uh -huh. So he still has that. Basically, he still has the shard. A lot of heroes have gotten the shard kind of built into the talent now. Uh, let's see, Viper, mana costs increase to 24 on all levels on poison attack. Nether toxin decreased from 8 second duration to 6.5. Scepter now doubles the damage and slow for enemies within 500 distance from Viper. Additionally allows corrosive skin to deal the first damage instance. Uh, first instance of damage uh, the moment debuff is applied. Nose dive reworked the scepter grants nose dive. Oh my god, I have to look at this too. Viper slams into the ground. What the fuck? He slams into the ground, disarming enemies in a 500 radius for four seconds and splattering everyone in a 1200 area of effect with the effect of corrosive skin. What the fuck am I reading? Cooldown 20 seconds, cast range 300, travel speed 500, mana cost. The fuck? I, I have to look at it. I can't. The, the fucking description text is the silliest shit I've ever read. I fly. Okay. Place no stive. That was it. We did it. We we no no stove. Uh, no stove. Right, let, let's see it again. Let's see. Let's see a fucking high impact replay here. This is Viper, and there it is. Yes. We put corrosive, and we disarm. There's, there's like no sound to it. He doesn't even make a sound when he lands. He just like, here I am. 
The little poison sound of them having corrosive skin. He does he does a spin. He does do a spin. Can we have longer cast range for enjoying this, please? Oh wow. Oh 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 oh. I didn't know we were gonna get so fancy with it. Can I have more cast range, please? <laughs> can can I have more cast range, please? This, this is very fancy. Can I can I <laughs> He's done with the twirl so early. Da -da -da -da, da -da -da -da. <laughs> oh, the fucking ballerina moves. I'm not ready. Yep, this this seems great. Can you imagine doing this in an actual game of Dota? This footage is not slowed down, chat. Look at this. Uh, I'm coming. Uh, <laughs> I'm I'm almost there. Yeah, <laughs> people are just gonna step to the side, dude. They're like, "What the fuck is Viper doing?" Oh, Granted, it's 1,200 radius, so like when he lands, he will apply the the bullshit. That will happen. Like it's hitting this guy over here. It's fucking huge AOE. Also, this makes me question. Yep, okay. Well, I'm glad we read this. Uh, I'm not gonna read his talents, because fuck Viper. Uh, visage mana cost is increased on the soul assumption. Some of familiar's um, familiar attack range is increased by 20. Stormform radius is increased uh, on the stun. Bonus attack damage is decreased by 5% on Science's Grave. Sure, sure, sure. Less damage on the damage talent. I think you take the Grave Jail talent anyway. And the armor corruption is also down. That's a big nerf though. And the movement speed is down a little bit. Yeah, good. I mean, Visage was way too strong. He was insanely strong. So mana cost. He did get more range. He did get more AoE in the stun. But less damage, less damage, less armor reduction. Still think Visage is strong after all this. These are not massive nerfs to a hero with like nearly 60% win rate in Divine Immortal. He's like insane winner. I still think this is strong. Uh, Ether Remnant reworked to shard, decreases the Ether Remnant cooldown by two seconds, increases the watch range by 150, and changes the Remnant to persist through being activated by creeps. Damages creeps once but does not disappear. Uh, now closest. Now affects the closest unit to the remnant rather than the closest one to the center line. Okay, nice. Uh, no longer interrupts. I actually never understood how it fucking targeted. I, I don't play much Void Spirit and I didn't ever fucking understand how it works. The closest one to the center line is how it worked. Huh. But now it's the closest unit to a remnant. Yeah, because some people were like, oh, it's the farthest unit or oh, the closest unit. But I knew that neither of those were really true because I've been in the fucking middle and I got pulled. But that's because it literally took the one closest to the center line. Uh, okay, now I understand. But that's not how it works anymore. No longer interrupts effects that uh, displace a unit like Flaming Lasso or Pearl Voice. Makes sense. Uh, Resonant Pulse damage is replaced with the Outer Dissimulate Ring. Okay. And spell amp is replaced with the dis. Oh, he doesn't have the spell amp anymore, and he doesn't. Oh, jeez. Oh, wow. Okay, he got some big old nerfs, didn't he? Yeah, he he got cocked. My my boy, they cut his balls off. Yeah, Vo Void is dead inside, dude. Void is actually dead inside. Between this and the Witchblade nerf as well chat i, I want to say that void is fucking snip snip the, this guy might have received one of the biggest nerfs of the entire patch Th this is pretty big his shard used to be really good now this one i am not very sure about that not very sure about that and the talents i mean yeah you have outer dissimilate ring but now this is this is snip snip man. He's he's so weak now. 
so weak compared to before. You don't have stun, you don't have spell amp, you don't have the damage from the shard along with the rest. I mean, uh, you don't have the resonant pulse damage together with the spell amp. He, he, he's gutted, man. He's gutted. Wow. Um, heal damage is decreased from 18 to 45 to 15 to, 40, to 45. Okay. Shard no longer provides movement speed modifier. Fair enough. Uh, slow per second now deals increasing amount of damage from 10 to a maximum of 30, 50, 90. Wow. You can do a lot of damage with upheaval. You can farm with upheaval. Farming upheaval is here. Hmm. Okay. Interesting. No movement speed modifier. What a big nerf to the shard. What a big nerf. Um, okay. Reworked shard. Shikuchi puts a mark on enemy on enemies. It damages that last six seconds. When a Geminate attack procs enemies with a mark within 1200 will be attacked with. Okay. So the shard is no longer if they have a bug on them. It's just if they have been shikuchi Scepter no longer makes Windrun undispellable. Scepter now grants invisibility that doesn't break uh, attacking or casting spells. Light Windrun effect is created around the Windrunner, Windranger position whenever she attacks from invisibility. Invisibility that doesn't break attacking or casting spells. Question mark indeed, Valve. Yeah, I... I hey, team happy indeed. patch day. Slow blind no longer lingers when the enemy becomes magic immune. Question mark? So we can just wind run and run in and start shooting them. And we're not becoming visible. We're just invisibly shooting them. I <laughs> doesn't understand what they did. <laughs> this is this is a note from the editor. <laughs> Someone's like, uh, balance team? Well, this doesn't sound balanced at all. <laughs> <laughs> this, this is this is me working on my fucking homework you know like uh yes the uh the antelope could run at 200 miles per hour question mark <laughs> remember to google the land speed of the antelope later we'll just put this in as a placeholder um yep seems good uh, i don't know what to say <laughs> 5% power shot penalty is replaced with Windrun Radius, sure. Windrun Radius, power shot damage reduction, sure. Windrun cooldown reduction, yeah, yeah, yeah. invisibility replacement on the spell. Sure. Um, okay, less strength for Wyvern. Flight duration is nerfed. Thank fuck, dude. 10 seconds is forever. This shit is fucking broken. Uh, okay, good. Thank you. Uh, could probably have nerfed him even more, but yeah, thank you. Cold Embrace cast range is also massively down. That's big. Base attack range is uh, decreased on Witch Doctor. Initial cask projectile is increased in speed. Cast range is decreased, though. Radius is increased on the heal. The heal is weaker on level 1. Now deals damage to enemies for the same amount as healing? Oh, oh what a chat ability. 650 AoE. That's big. That's big. That's big. Uh, Death Ward now has 50% bonus accuracy. Chance to ignore evasion. The same also affects Voodoo Switcheroo. Uh, Switcheroo, one second more duration? Yo, that, don't sleep on that. That's a big one. Can you end Voodoo Switcheroo early? Or is it always the fixed duration chat? I don't play Witch Doctor. Can you end it early? Ever? You can end it? You can? It's fixed? It's fixed? You can? Do I, I'm getting extremely mixed responses here. Fixed? No? Yes? You can blink out of it? <laughs> we, I mean, yeah, three seconds duration mean that you can you can potentially do some face shift blinks with it. Alright, well, it turns out chat doesn't play Witch Doctor more than I do, so... We're gonna, we gotta find out. Can we end it early? Well, apparently we need to skill the ulti or else it doesn't do anything. We cannot move. So no, we, we cannot end it early unless like stop command specifically ends it or something. Nope, nope, nope. And we also can't blink out of it, like face shift level blink out of it. But we can blink immediately upon 
getting out of it. I mean, say we're getting chased by this guy here and we get hit and we immediately do this, then we would be able to blink very quickly when we get out of it. But we will exist for a second, should exist for a second. We can double check this just for anyone's confusion. I'm gonna create faces void here. Um, and if he hits us and then we do, fuck, we haven't refreshed hit us and then when we do this and then he does this and then I blink I cannot blink because I I exist before I blink that's the difference between Puck who doesn't exist but blinks anyway yes, which doctor agrees <clears throat> good, yeah. so uh but but against a lot of people auto attacking you you're gonna be able to blink out quite easily with this. So Blink plus Shard, really strong on on uh, Witch Doctor now. Um, and overall, I mean, Witch Doctor got some juicy changes here, dude. Uh, pretty good. We have a uh, skeleton duration decreased by 20 seconds. Wow. And then he has a 25% skeleton duration increase and minus 25% skeleton summon cooldown. Okay, pretty good talent. I think I would take that over the attack speed for sure i think i would definitely take that uh heavenly jump cooldown is increased from 25 to 10 to 26 to 14 thank fuck slow is decreased to 80 percent and slow duration from 1.6 to 2.5 to 1.6 always and static field health as damage 9 to 8 percent and then movement speed is replaced with health and minus four second health, um, minus, minus four second health, minus four second heavenly jump cooldown is here. So we can still have it at 10, uh, but it costs him a talent. And then uh, 30 movement speed after heavenly jump for 1.6 seconds. Ooh, that sounds annoying, the speed. Okay, well, I mean, some, some nerfs there. Okay, and that's it. That's the patch. I fucking did it. Um overall impression overall impression i would say one of the biggest losers is void spirit for sure uh one of the biggest winners is shadow fiend for sure it's a lot of interesting changes the reworks and so and pa sounds really good pango sounds like he lost as well um there's so much to try out. I like it. It's a big old juicy patch, boys. It took me a long ass fucking time to read this. I will say, good job over at Valve. You have made a good, girthy, thick patch with a lot of new content, new Aghanim Scepters. Doom is one of the biggest winners too. I fucking forgot about Doom. It's so long since we since we are at the D. Um, yeah, Doom is busted, I think. Clock also seems strong. Um, good job over at Valve. I mean, it's a big, big old juicy patch. That's what we've been waiting for. That's what we've been begging for. We've been, we've been thirsty as fuck for this. Um, uh, some terrain changes. You nerfed Dire. That's good. That's good. Um, I can't wait to see the flag bearers. I think the change to streak experience is good. But all in all. I still have to rate the entirety of the patch based on these two lines here and um, say that this is my least favorite patch you've ever released. So uh, while you did a good job, everyone at Valve, fuck you. you. You took away my heart. My heart is aching. There's a hole where my heart used to be. <sighs> and, and you give us this shit. What the fuck is this? What is this Hi, atrocity? Wagon, I just got here to resell. Can you please go over the patch again? Yeah, fuck you. Thank you for the resub. My voice is dying. Uh, no, thank you. Yeah, I'm gonna go sleep now. And when I come back, we'll play a lot of more.